Hello, welcome. It's Hardlore time. How are you, Bo? I'm great, buddy. This one's a long time coming. This is a huge event. We're here to celebrate the release of Pain of Truth's debut LP, mm. Not Through Blood. We are joined by one quarter of the Smith Dynasty, <laughs> Long Island royalty, the the baby boy, the the crown prince of Long Island, <laughs> Michael Smith. What's up? What's up? How are you, How Michael? Are you? I'm good. How are you guys? So good. Doing good. Nice. nice. Thanks for having me. We are both the youngest of yeah. of, of several brothers in a musical family, Michael. Yes. Um, Chris and Danny both playing in backtrack. Your brother, your your eldest brother being like a <laughs> the president or something. <laughs> yeah, he's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> that's something See, different right now he's in a different like field of work but he's 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 in uh in the law he's kicking professional ass somewhere while yes. you're kicking yes uh non-professional uh, unprofessional <laughs> ass yeah <laughs> unemployed ass. was the was the path to hardcore laid out for you yeah you know, did you did you have a choice to get here <laughs> yes I really did. yeah i did I did have a choice. I could have just kept playing basketball or something. Yeah. Are you good at basketball? Uh, yeah, I was when I was younger. I was pretty good. Do yeah. you want or what, dude? No, nah, I don't encourage you like that. I started smoking weed too early in high school. I just <laughs> didn't. High school. Did you make like a decision to like, I'm going to do like, I'm going to get into music instead of sports? No, I mean, honestly, I was always... I'm trying to think of like the first like experience I had with music, like like live music, people playing guitars and everything. And yeah, it was pretty early on on it, like that I was pretty sad on. Like I always wanted to do it, you know. Like seeing Christopher play in bands, even like way before Backtrack, like just in the basement, them practicing. Yeah. Um, Were you peeking around a corner looking like? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I wouldn't like think about. Like if you asked me when I was younger if I'd be doing it when I'm gonna be 29 in like a few weeks, like I'd probably be like, "Oh, that's crazy." But like just being around music and everything, I always wanted to be definitely mm -hmm. like be involved, you know. Especially mm -hmm. when I went to a backtrack show and got involved in like hardcore, you know. That's the classic story, right? You saw, yeah. you saw Franz singing. No, uh, for, I mean, for backtrack. No, I, Fra I did, I did, uh, Franz was at like a really early backtrack show on Long Island, uh, at this spot called the Black Box Theater. And that was like the first time I met him. And, uh, he actually, I remember that night he stayed at my parents' house. And I think in the morning, like my mom was like, oh, like going to make breakfast for everyone. And he said like exactly what he wanted. So like a tea, like ingredients, like <laughs> very specific and she was like how do you know i have that and he was like oh i think he like i think they might have like raided the fridge the night before he responded in, <laughs> in perfect italian yeah um colin did you make a, a a choice from were you ever a sport guy uh fuck no dude really couldn't skate couldn't throw a football i was flexible so i, I was like you're still spin flexible. kick or or yeah. die you know yeah, those are my options. I yeah. I played baseball a lot. Were you good? And I I mean I have long arms, and really I was did. the only kid who could make uh, a play from. Uh, I played third base. I could make the throw to first and make the out because I, I I could throw really far. That extra know. length. That, <laughs> I just whip it. I don't, I don't inches, know. Dude. This is this is what my dad would tell me. But anyway, I made I I was batting and I I got hit by a ball and broke my wrist and I wasn't able to play guitar and that was like well fuck this like mm. all i want to do is play guitar why am i and then later on fell skateboarding broke my thumb couldn't play guitar i was like well fuck skateboarding it was wow. literally all like <laughs> these accidents made me into just committed but guitar butterfly playing. the butterfly effect you know? <laughs> <laughs> i would say i had a half guide in taylor and a half reverse guide in taylor because it was so it was very much like Listen to this stuff, but also, fuck you, fuck you. Don't <laughs> yeah. come in my room. You know. No, I get that too. I had the same thing. Like I was gonna bring it up earlier when I was talking about them practicing, like in the basement. Like 
I'm trying to, I think the band was literally called Vitala, like the band. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Isn't that hilarious? Did you ever, did you hear about that ever? Or no? no, Vitello had a dancing. No, no, he wasn't in it. Like, he wasn't Vitello, in it. I, the way I remember it, like, <laughs> like, the, the way I remember it coming about was they were in a band called At Best, not Vitello, just Christopher and uh, his friend Tim Schimenti. I forget who else was in it, but they were uh, they would practice all the time, and Vitello would always be there. And then they started playing shows and like, it wasn't like New York hardcore music or, or anything mm. like that. It was more like, I don't even fucking know what you call it. Just like some Long Island, like melodic, but by Sound Tyler, majority like, type stuff or. Uh, yeah. Like a little bit more like emo I I would say, you know, Fuck yeah, dude. but, <laughs> but Vitalo nonetheless would just pit like leeway was playing. Like <laughs> that they For, played. to practice. To, yeah, like, a little, like so cool. I, I, they wouldn't really let me down there, like when I was younger, you know, mm. like so that's why I would bring it up. I'd I'd open the door and they'd be like, get the fuck out of here. Like, <laughs> so Chris <laughs> would say that to you? Yeah, like pretty probably not so aggressively, but he'd be like, Yo, get the fuck out of here. Okay. Like, we're like, we're busy, you know? Like yeah, yeah. I'd be like, oh shit. Like, Dude, Colin, you that, gotta start a band called like Bavalt or something. Well, I was just <laughs> telling you about how I wanted to open a coffee shop named Scanlon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now that just makes me want to do it even more. Um, That's so Chris, you're telling me you're telling me Chris always hasn't always just been like the best guy ever. No, the best I mean, most he's, supportive he's, guy. No, he's he's been the best guy ever forever. But he was, I mean, he was. You're the little brother. Yeah, you're the little yeah, fucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like nothing like too crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but when he was like 13. Like thirteen to fifteen in those first couple bands, he would he took it very seriously and be like, "Yeah, I don't like want you down here messing around," you know? Yeah. Uh, but that made me want to do it more. You know what I mean? Like the first, like I'm trying to the first person I saw play drums. That was like because there was guitars around my house and like and like little amps and shit, so it was more normal. But the first time like someone set drums up downstairs, and I was like, "Oh shit!" There's it was our friend uh, Sean McMahon. And he and he's a good drummer, so like I, I remember being like, "Holy shit, that's fucking awesome!" And do you play drums at all? Yeah, I could play drums. Yeah, nothing like I can't back it up like you, but I, I but could you play can go, a little bit. Yeah, do bat. Yeah, I wrote. Uh, <laughs> How do you work this? Like, <laughs> I wrote "Acting Up" uh, the, the first single on yeah, drums. I yeah, I wrote it on drums with like when me and Nick uh, got to the studio before everyone. We flew in like a night early. And I think we've got in like latest shit. And I th- it was like two, two something in the morning and we just weren't sleeping. And I was like, yeah, I wonder if we could just go in this, like in the room where we were going to record. I was like, everything was set up. So I was like, oh, I wonder if we could fuck around in there. We only had nine songs at the time where we might've had more, but we knew we were going to cut a couple of them. Right. So we just started fucking around and uh, I was on the drums and that's why like that part, kind of king nines it like the hi-hat part yeah like we just broke there and like looked at each other i was like (laughs) no we were like oh fuck it and then he he was like oh that song's dope i was like dude that song with the actual like with nick the drummer uh, on it would be insane and you're telling me acting up single one my favorite song on the album was not was not a song on the flight there Sick. Which is sick, you know? Yeah, and like sick. there was question whether or not to put it on, like or to even like start recording it, or maybe we would record it and save it for something. But then like once it was actually recorded and then like they heard the lyrics and everything with it, they were like, oh fuck, all right. Like <laughs> you know what we call that, Michael? Hard lore, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. Uh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm I, trying- I have a video of us uh like the first run through. Here it is, right here. You want, to, you want to see like the wow like, that was awesome that was it's kind of it's kind of uh you can send it to me i'll put it in the episode yeah 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 you can do that i'll send it to that, you. everybody just saw it it was awesome they loved it, was, it. oh yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, like i'm trying to think i think most guitar players who i know can play drums a little and bit. most drummers can play a little bit of guitar too yeah i, I, I feel like if you can write because there's a difference between playing and writing true you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah i think yeah. if you can write riffs 
then you fundamentally understand what you yep. want to happen uh, on yes. drums a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel about it. Like I don't like write the I wouldn't never take away like saying I write the drums, but at the same time, like I'm showing a riff and it's like yeah. All right, the drums are going to sound something like this. You yes. can fucking do like whatever. I want you to go do the gotcha, do yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah, battle like once again. Yeah. I want you to go yeah, exactly. Oh, I love that part. We'll yeah, get there. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. man. Do, how does it feel so so with Chris and Danny in mind? You know, they mm-hmm. paved the way. You had a choice. You chose to be here and now here you are the last man standing on the road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean like Christopher is with uh uh, he joined I'm the Avalanche with Vinny from like the movie life, the other band he's got. Which and, that's like, so got to be an insane full circle thing for him, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, growing up, like that was his, like that was like even for me, honestly, like he was the Avalanche. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> like enough. I remember listening to I'm the Avalanche like when I was younger and like thinking like they were the fucking biggest band ever. You know, when I was in like fifth grade or something. Yeah. But yeah, it's crazy that I'm like the last one, like kind of touring like a lot like, yeah right, mm-hmm. you know so it's it's uh congrats man it's fucking awesome. yeah <laughs> dude, it. It, feels, it feels sick i'm happy that it's that it seems like it's working right now you know and it's it's got to feel good for for them we've talked about it many times on the show how many doors backtrack opened just like the gates between long island and the city were opened and have been open since as like now it's one unified for sure thing yeah yeah i agree with that Definitely. So that they, that this journey that they started and 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 worked it's, so hard is kind of is kind of still going through. You're yeah. doing it. You you yeah, are yeah. the proof of like yeah. that their work paid off. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. So yeah. when it comes to when it came to writing this, was it collaborative? Was it? Are you? Yeah. In- no, nah, no. Nah, this one was like more collaborative. I mean, honestly, the only reason the other songs were not collaborative, like more collaborative between us was just because i just fucking wrote that shit in my room in like a couple days and like it was just me and a drummer uh recorded it and like it wasn't there was no band yet you know what i mean so there wasn't anyone to really collaborate with like no one was pain of truth was a like a i hate and i don't i don't mean to say this in a derogatory way but it was like a a pandemic project yeah 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 Yeah. i mean i had the songs um a little bit before because i i had like i want to say paint the song pain of truth i had a recording of me when i was in europe with hangman i just i had like a video of i gave the bass player like when we were sound checking i was like yo record me playing this riff and it was like pretty much that that song so i so i had them a couple of them like started already but it was probably intended to be hangman songs originally. yeah what made you make it something different um those do like I mean, Hangman did a lot and, you know, we weren't super hyped up band or anything. We were just doing a lot of that because we just wanted the experience of touring and being together. You know what I mean? Some of those dudes are a little bit older than me and just, they just had to like buckle down. We were making absolutely, you know what I mean? There was no like yeah. money involved or anything to really keep it going. So they didn't have the same grind set. Were you playing in Hangman when we played a show together in Aniata? Oh yeah, with the I think we like touched on it a bit on like the short that we did. Yeah, yeah I forgot about that show. Yeah, I, and yeah. I didn't realize that that you were in that band. I didn't, yeah, I didn't like, realize it. The SWAT like showed up and shit because I think someone. It wasn't even anything too crazy. I think someone just got hit. Someone got someone got hit, and the person who was like kind of putting on the show, which was just coming up to me to talk. And like, yeah, and, and she was like, you need to make an announcement or whatever. And I was like, there's the microphone. And she was like, well, stop the, the noise. And we were just like, no. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> and there was like actual like riot police there and like gear and shit. It was on wow. a campus. So it started as more of you and like one other guy as just kind of a project. At, at what point did you know it was going to be a full time um, band? I guess more so like when we because. All right. The real the real thing, like. The first song, Pain and Truth, I wrote it like Hangman in Europe, like whatever. But when I was really getting it together, I can't say his name. I don't know if you want me to say his name on here, but mm-hmm. I have a childhood friend that he went to prison and I grew up going to shows with him. He's a drum. He's the first dude I ever jammed with, like fifth grade, like playing like covers with him and shit. Yeah. Was he in and, Sandra Ground? 
with you? No, but he was the he he the only reason he wasn't in Stand Your Ground though is because his parents were just fucking hardcore on him. Not the oh, good okay. kind. Yeah, you know? like they were just they were just very strict with him. Yeah. Um he's a fucking he's the best kid ever. He's such a good kid. Always had jobs and shit. And like I, I never really understood it, like why they gave him such a hard time. But mm. um he was in jail for something and I was trying to I wanted to give him something to look forward to when he got out. Mm. So the plan was to like do like three songs or something, like three or four songs. Like record him with one of my friends that doesn't really just do it for fun, you know? Yeah. And then when he got out, or if I could get him the tracks in there somehow, yeah. which yeah. honestly is pretty easy, like where he was, he it was like we could have figured it out. Right. Um, and he could have just learned him, like give him something to look forward to, like when he gets out to just like try to put like a benefit show or something together yeah. for him, and, like get some money together for him when he's out. So, so that was like really, the only goal of Pain of Truth. I was, that was really like wow. the original. Awesome. That was just me too. Like that was didn't have anything to do with anyone else. That was just between me and him. And I told, like, I gave him the idea, and he was like, "Yeah, dude, that'd be so fucking sick." But I guess, like, when you're in a situation like that, like sometimes, like, like other things in life, I'm guessing, just there's like more important things. Like when mm-hmm. you're wasting so much time sitting there. I, so towards the end. I had the songs, I showed them to him and he was like, dude, this is sick, but I'm going to get married when I get out and get a job and like have a kid. And that's exactly what he did. And it's awesome. You know what I mean? And he knew, and he said, he was like, yo, the songs are fucking dope and I'm never going to be able to do anything. You know, we're going to play like one show. And that honestly could have been awesome too, but (laughs) but, that's a good um, man. Yeah, that, but that's, that's really awesome. that's honestly like why I got all the songs grouped together. It was because Hangman was kind of like slowing down a little bit because everyone just honestly we didn't have the money to keep doing it. Um, and then I was just kind of bored, and I had him sitting there talking to him every weekend, and I was like, "Fuck it, I have a couple tracks." I'll just like, not that they didn't mean anything to me, but it was like, "Oh, I have them." I'll just like, "What's the point in sitting on them?" You know what I mean? Right. Then, like, once he said he was out, then I was just, like, I didn't really think about it for a while. I think Lumpy had, I sent him the Lumpy just as, like, just because I knew he'd fuck with the style of it. Yeah. And he was the one that really, I think he hit me back up and was like, dude, you got to sing on this. And I was like, uh, like, I sang in a band before. I hate listening to it. Mm. Like, the lyric and, like, all the lyrics and shit now. So I was, like, a, I was younger when I did that, but... Mm. And he was like, yeah, I think it would be fucking sick. Like, I think it's time for you to do that. And I was like, I'll try it and see how it is, you know. And I don't really remember, like, when it became an actual, I guess, when we put it up on, yeah, like, online, you know. Did you yeah. have uh, the Northeast Avengers assembled before putting it up? Or, <laughs> or did that come after putting the music out? In terms of, like, oh, did, was everyone on it? Yeah, yeah, cause, yeah. Because once I started doing the vocals, then I started hearing like backup vocal parts. Yeah. And that's when I hit Nick up. Like I was really, I really just hit him up to come. I think like the first text uh, to come. <laughs> hey man, you going to come? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm on my way. <laughs> no, Where's Nick I from? He's like from five minutes down the road from me. He's from, so I'm he's in, Long Island. Yeah. He's Long Island. I'm Long Island. Um, Ridge is Long Island. Ridge is not Long Island. Oh, Ridge, honestly, he deserves an episode anyway. But yeah. maybe then, maybe then we'll all find out where Ridge is yeah. from. I've <laughs> no, he's from he's from St. Mary's County. He's just in like that's like <laughs> Collins. What is that? <laughs> Come again? <laughs> Who is St. Mary? Which oh, one is she? No, St. Mary's <laughs> County. It's like. Uh, south of baltimore it's like a little spot oh, i've never been oh. i've never been but any opportunity he has he, he lets people know that you gotta go to st mary's county apparently it's the most beautiful place in the world but <laughs> so um, is ridge the northeast aspect of the of the yeah and then uh yeah and then zach the bass player he was like in connecticut for a while but uh, he's he's been yeah he's awesome uh he's in brooklyn now though so okay. yeah but yeah, Pain of, going, Truth, Pain of Truth Northeast Hardcore, the longest Instagram handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of awesome though. I 100% agree. They all yeah. thought that was so stupid when I first made it that. 
We're like, but now everybody knows it. Yeah, it sticks out. I feel like if you're, if you're, yeah, you, know. you can't if you tag it, it's gonna fucking yeah, it's got its own <laughs> gravitational pull. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, Nick. Um, I think the first text that I sent to him, like about the paint truth thing, was like, oh, dude, I need need someone to do backup vocals on like a couple of these songs you want to do it and he was like yeah so he just came to the studio and just like i remember him listening to it and he was like dude this is fucking awesome like what the fuck like <laughs> i did not expect it to be like sound sound like this like this is like was this, he like did you know that i played guitar or what? no i mean I've, <laughs> I've known nick for like i've known him for over 10 years now and i always wanted to be in a band with him like he's me and him just clicked like the second we met like a while ago and um he could just he was always so busy he's like a grown he's like a 50 year old man you know what i mean like he, he's always at work isn't he like uh, your been, age though no he's younger than me dude he's younger than see me, which is insane <laughs> he's <laughs> but, a fucking he's a living question mark i know dude. He's, <laughs> he's a fucking man though he's a, he's a character for sure yeah, yeah. I, so. I always wanted to be in a band with him and honestly that's why i hit him up like just because it was like oh whatever like it'll be down on paper me and you were in a band we'll be able to look back on it one day and be like oh that was sick remember like yeah <laughs> we're in a band for like a couple shows or something same thing with ridge like i just like he was doing the artwork that's what it was ridge okay. did the art like the dog or whatever for me yeah he put the logo together and he sent me uh the last song on the first release the linyhc song he like uh sent me that last track it was a little bit shorter i added like a couple riffs into it to make it a little but that bit was him just messing around yeah like dude wow he his whole fucking it's fucked up his, his computer, psycho like, like his files like <laughs> he's got a whole like e-town record that he just made for fun like it's like it's it's so good it's insane wow Wow. Like I was like, dude, you better like actually put this out one day. People are gonna be dying for it after this. Now that yeah, now that it's should. out there, he is like an actual brilliant musician. It's crazy, dude. He really is, and I'm nothing like that. So it's crazy hanging out <laughs> with him and like watching him like do his thing. I'm like, dude, yeah. you're fucking, because it's a, it's funny to him too. I think you know, like how good he is, like how good he really is, like it's like, like it's a, silly. Yeah, to it's him. almost like yeah. a joke. Like he thinks it's funny. Like the better he gets, but. You yeah. assemble these two incredible riffers, you know? Yeah, and it's sick because, like, if you watch the first show that we played, like, none of them knew each other. You know? It was really? Only my, like, Nick didn't know Ridge. Whoa. Nick didn't know Zach. Zach didn't know Ridge. Like, none of them knew each other. I and was, that you know, was... Like, the first practice before the first show, like, the day before the first show, they walked in the practice room and they were like, hey, what's up? I'm Nick. I'm Ridge. <laughs> oh, my God. Introduce him. And we went I to think... Texas Roadhouse. Oh, <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Lumpy posted a picture. The first show was at Amityville Music. Yeah. Yeah. We right? did two. Um, yeah. You yeah. headlined your first two shows. Yeah. We sold them out too. That's why. How did, did you, one. how did you have the, like, what, what made you be, think to do that or think that you could do that? You did it. So congrats. But what, what was the gimmick there where you were like, what if we just fucking headline? I don't know, dude. The vibe was just something about, like the pit was probably mainly like the pandemic and it was like, oh, people are going to be itching to go to a show. Yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure we put the flyer up before I could be wrong, but I think like it wasn't really happening yet. Like shows weren't really going to like going. Oh, oh, uh, I don't when, think. It, so was it 2021 or 2022? Yeah. yeah. I think it was twenty twenty. I remember it was near ours and, uh, we both had the dual black and white Yeah, I for two that. shows. And I was like, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Same way. Yeah. I remember being fucking psyched on that. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I. it was, I don't know whose idea. I don't think we ever questioned not to. I don't know if that sounds like bad, but. But the bands, nah. like you had like King Nine and Tsunami on there. Yeah. Bands who was the first shows it was not. Yes. <laughs> and they were, they all didn't even think about it. They were just like, yeah, sounds sick. Let's do it. Yeah. That's it's awesome. awesome. Su- dude, Tsunami was putting on for us like right off the bat. I didn't really know any of them either uh, prior. So it was, I think like I met a couple of them when I was with Hangman over there, but we didn't really like get a chance to click too hard. I think mm. It was like Death Threat Hangman was in Mexico together. And then we went up to Cali <laughs> and we fucking played the Hands of God record release like in like a uh. school. 
And that's like the first time I really linked up with any of those dudes. But the uh, second that awesome. Page Truth came out, they were all like backing it and they were all popping off at the show, like at our first show, like all going crazy. So it's amazing. I love all those dudes. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So you play your first show. Um, <laughs> you headline two of them. <laughs> yeah. Two, two sold out first shows. Two sold out first show debut shows. Um, is it? Had, does it dawn on you immediately? Like, oh, this is a uh, this un, this is a fucking real thing, whether I knew it or not. Yeah. Like, yeah, I knew it was gonna like real thing in terms of like. This is my job like, now. <laughs> no, not like that. Like, I'm still, yeah. dude. I'm. I don't believe shit until it really is ha- like sure. right in front of me, and like I have it. You know, yeah. I try. I try not to get too excited for anything. Uh, so I kind of had that mindset like from day one with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but I knew like we were going to, I was, I was going to try. I definitely knew that. Sure. I told, I told all them, I was, you know, I was like, ah, I'm going to, at a certain point, I'm going to try to like go out and play some shows. So if you guys can't do it because of work or whatever, like, I just want to like be up front. So yeah, find some guys to do it, you know, if we have to. And for the most part, everyone was cool with it. So we were able to keep going. And then when, once we played a couple out of state shows, I think like Nick saw the vision of it more and he like, you know, took risks, I guess you could say, or Mm -hmm. um, trying to think of the right word. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like he like quit his fucking job. Committed. He committed. Yeah. Yeah. He like, you know, that's what, that's what it came down to. Like we, we all slowly, Show by show, we were like, "All right, dude, this could be like cool." Real. You know, we've all wanted to do this shit. We could, we could try to do it right now. You know, so and wow. having having them in the band now is. Bo Bo asked about writing already, but and you know we're skipping ahead. I like to do these chronologically, so we'll we'll backtrack at some point. No pun intended. But um, yes. how how collaborative was this record with you, Ridge and Nick, being three like prolific riffers? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So um, it was pretty, dude. We're like, I've never been in a band that's so honest and open with each other. We've really, like, knock on wood, like, no disagreements. If someone doesn't like something, it's just like, ah, I don't really like it. It's like, all right. Like, I, even if I did it, like, even if I wrote it, I'm like, all right, fuck it. Cause yeah. Ridge is going to write something insane anyway, and vice versa. <laughs> if Ridge writes something that's like, that we don't like someone else is going to pick up the slack on it. So like, we're pretty, and that's worked the whole time. So like, we're not trying to fuck with it at all. I think it also helps that we're all so far apart from each other that like, we're not always together. (laughs) It's not like we're in like a practice room twice a week or something like meeting at the same time every week. It wouldn't surprise me if you were though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel feel like that's real. That's the, the real NYHC destiny. Yeah, yeah, we ain't man. played a show in ten years, but we practice three times no, a week. You know? See, like we're the <laughs> we complete opposite. I can't remember the last time that we practiced. Like wow. we haven't practiced in so long. So I think it kind of helps, though, like a little bit, honestly, because we're not like we're never at each other's throats or anything. We're just we're always chilling. So. I love to practice before a show, before a tour, whatever. But practicing just for the sake of practicing oh. is my least favorite thing. It's the worst. It's my absolute least favorite thing. <laughs> Dude, I, I was just talking about it recently. Like, I feel like it might be, like, I feel like uh, some younger kids when they're trying to be in a band, it's like, we just got to practice every day. We just got to, then it's yeah. like, I don't know. I see the side of it or it's, you guys might sound really good, but you also start to fucking hate each other. You're just I think like, when you're learning an instrument, obviously it's, it's different. different. When it's yeah, like, hey, yeah, we got to practice well enough to be, to play a song. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but once sure. you're cruising, dude, once you're a self-sustaining entity, it's more yeah. about rehearsing. Yeah, I agree. The, like, the set or whatever, rather than like, how do we play these songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You would think. I mean, some of my bands. These motherfuckers for, be forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let's yeah. go back in time a little bit, Michael. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Were you... That you say, you know, you say you're a relaxed, laid back guy. You guys, the the vibe is chill and pain of truth. Uh, you guys all love weed. You've made that very clear. <laughs> were you were you ever an edgeman, or have you were you born uh, smoking nah, marijuana cigarettes? I I went to my first show and 
I don't think, I mean, I was too young to be getting like, I wasn't getting trash or anything. I definitely like snuck a few beers or something by that time. I was probably like 12 <laughs> and like first or first or second show in, I remember like Celia and Vitalo coming up to me and being like, Oh, youth crew, youth crew. Like you're in the, youth. mainly Vitalo was like, yo, you're a youth crew. You're... And like, I didn't understand the whole, I just heard like, Oh, like, you're in, you know, you're yeah. in. And yeah. I was like, fuck yeah, 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 fuck yeah. I think I put it on like a stand your ground shirt, like stand your ground youth crew. Oh. On the back. <laughs> oh. Like but literal, like, literal like, youth crew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like at the same time, I was already like starting to roll joints with like receipt paper or some shit. Yeah, like, there you go. Room. So then, but I was smoking weed or had a beer or something at a show not too long after that. And they were like, what the fuck? Like, that's not. That's not, not youth crew. crew. <laughs> yeah. That's not youth crew. I was like, wait, what? And they're like, that's like you got to be straight edge. Like, no. And I was like, ah, oh, dude, that's not me. Yeah, <laughs> tell I was just tell being me. honest. You know what I mean? I didn't want. Yeah, to of course. It. I could have faked it. You I could have been like, oh, dude, you know what? You're right, and put it down. And then two years later, I would have broke. <laughs> but yeah, I was never. I was never edge. I actually stopped drinking. Like it's been like a year now. Congrats. So, you know, yeah, no alcohol for a year. Feels. So much better. Honestly. Yeah, dude. Really? So Boy, that's why cool. I still weed smoke. is weed's chill. It's awesome. Yeah, weed is chill. <laughs> my dad is fucking dope. Yeah, you know, my, yeah, my yeah, mom is too. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Tell wow. me about stand your ground a little bit, because I I remember becoming aware of stand your ground that's and awesome. and hearing about the twelve year olds playing hardcore on Long Island. Yeah, which um, feels like this cyclical New York hardcore story. You know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which made me excited to see what you would eventually all come to do. Because a lot of the time, them twelve-year-olds disappear. You know? Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. But oh, here's yeah, one now. They did. Um, they nah, did. Uh, so I mean, some like, no, nah, some disappeared for sure. Like a couple of them are still in it. Um, I mean, they're not like in touring bands or something, but they still go to shows. You know, every yeah. weekend, I still see them. Um, oh, some of them are in bands still. One of them's in that band, Stand Still, from Long Island. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. So, but honestly, Stand Your Ground, fucking awesome. Dude, it's awesome. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Uh, that's like one band that I look back on and that I'm like, I could like listen to it and be like, oh, dude, I'm like, I'm like, that's sick. I wrote that when I was fucking 13 years old, you know? That's real, man. Um, that's real hardcore. Yeah. And yeah. that was all just like Lindenhurst High School kids, like, like just from my hometown. Yeah. Uh, I would say like three of them, like, there was three of us that, so two other dudes and me going to shows like every weekend and like making it like a thing. And then the, the other two were more uh, just like metal head dudes that like played instruments. They happened they, to play. They yeah. like really knew, you know, I oh, still okay. seen, I seen one of them kind of recently. He's the fucking man, but it's just a different type That's, of musician. That is, you know I mean? And like, he's like knows, I don't know how to fucking play guitar. Like, I learned tabs. He knows how to read music. Yeah. You know, like that is such a high school. Just two different things. So like he liked it when it was right in front of him, the shows, but like he wasn't thinking about it when he went home. Like, mm. oh, I can't wait till I can do that. You know, he was right. like, thinking about playing like stadiums and shit. That's so. such a high school thing. No, totally. Yeah, there was like, a they're... there was a band that was like our uh, we had a band in high school and then there was another one and they had this mm. guitar player who could fucking Randy Rhodes, like sweet, yeah. like uh, unbelievable. Couldn't strum. Couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I see like, um, the most bizarre shit. Yeah. I mean, the kid's so nice. So it's not even like in a bad way, but the kid would definitely this one guy from my high school. I know he kind of keeps up with everything that, that we've been doing. And I know he's just like, how the fuck is this kid <laughs> playing these shows like yeah how the fuck because he was so good at guitar and like just knew all the music theory shit and like sweet oh and dude doing all that shit you know i got a bunch of those from yeah. the, the best yeah. guitar players in my high school are fucking fry cooks <laughs> now, you know yeah yeah straight yeah, up yeah yeah because they yeah. don't know they 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 masturbate on the guitar they don't uh, write yeah, so they're not no, doing anything that's, that's the other thing like i don't know how to put like a song on and necessarily just play it but if you give me a guitar and a joint, I'll fucking write. <laughs> Yo, write give a me a tracks. give me a tree and a baseball <laughs> bat and a tambourine. I'll write you a fucking <laughs> a whole album. Yeah. Fuck a guitar, dude. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, so standing around, standing around was sick. Uh, and it, and there's like a couple, 
there's a couple pictures of our first show and it's just so funny because it's from kind of like the side behind us a little bit like you could see the back of me with my guitar and then out into the crowd and it was like a teen night at like the local moose lodge but we (laughs) we, but we booked like four like punk hardcore bands on it yeah took over the night then there was like one like techno thing or some shit but the (laughs) crowd is just like one level going like this and then i know it just goes like up like this because it's just like vitalo dan Seely, drew cassaberry i think was there that's <laughs> awesome just like scanlon maybe jake zimmerman scanlon like, booked it scanlon booked the moose lodge. <laughs> no, he's he's like, i got this teen night thing like, oh, this is gonna be a good spot <laughs> maybe that yeah. did did stand your ground play out a lot did you play out of state at all no nah. No, we we almost played Connecticut one time, uh, but it it fell through. But we did get to play with a lot of like, like we played with Alpha and Omega when they came through. Nice, which was sick, dude. I have a, like, it was. I'm trying to think how old. Is that was. at was, AMH? No, that was at this spot like out east more. I think it was in Ronkonkoma. Mm. Um, it was like they only had a few shows there, but. Someone's mom like got lost. Classic story. I got lost on the way there, picking us up. So it was late, and it was like the mom that like didn't know anything about mm. the hardcore shit. You know, if my mom yeah. was picking us up, she like kind of got the gist already, like what was going on. But this one was just like a regular soccer mom, you know. And she she was lost. She was calling us, freaking out. She couldn't find it, and <laughs> um all the alpha and omega dudes saw us hanging out like waiting we were probably the last ones there and they stuck around and like we just like chilled and awesome watch them like climb light posts and shit when we were like 13 we we're like dude these guys are awesome like, <laughs> this is great yeah 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 um but and yeah we got to play with them we played with uh, rotting out and soul search on long island which was nice. fucking awesome um yeah, we, what we what was Stand Your Ground? What were those all you guys into? Like, what were your favorite bands at that time? Um, I would say the drummer Ryan loved Hammer Bros. Dude, fuck Hammer yeah, Bros, yeah. He, and he still does. Honestly, yeah. he still does. <laughs> he loved Hammer Bros and Throwdown. Fuck yeah, and uh, I love this guy. It. This guy sounds awesome. <laughs> Uh, the other the other guitar player that was more he loved like Metallica and Dude, fucking this is a youth crew band it's the best band of, yeah, of the yeah. coolest guys I know yeah he's awesome uh, I'm trying to throw some respect on my man Brian too Brian was more of like a Long Island guy like when I showed him he loved like Take Mech Sunday and shit when I first met him when I showed him Sound Majority like he like we were young too and I showed it to him and I was like dude they went to this high school he was like. Like he just moved there too. Like he moved. Oh, okay. To, he moved oh. to the nurse too. So to him, he was like, "Oh, I just struck gold." Like moving in, he kind of did because we still fucking hang out to this day. <laughs> he really did, man. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, standing ground is fucking awesome. It's on Bandcamp. Check it out. It'll be in the description. Standing ground. That's, that's oh, so sick. Yeah. Michael's first okay. band. That's yeah. so sick. I love that. Was Hangman next? Um, no, nah, there was one in between. I don't feel like. I don't want to talk about it. So Hangman was next. <laughs> Tell me about Hangman. Tell me about Hangman coming together. You were you were on guitar for Hangman as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just like I uh, went to college for a little bit, and my roommate was just – he's just so crazy. He's just a crazy mm-hmm. guy. And he liked hard music, but he just didn't have anyone to, like, show him the way to get to uh, a hardcore show, you okay. know? And he was from Long Island, but we just got linked up as roommates together. Really? And what kind yeah. of hard? What kind of music did he like? If he wasn't, you know, he, like he's super. Into, he was a pretty like, um, like just on his own kind of guy, a loner guy. He was playing video, yeah. video games, I think, at the time. So he knew certain shit from video game tracks, and then like went on YouTube. And oh, started, badass! Like, venturing off. So I put like a TUI <sighs> poster up in our room, and. Like very quietly, he's like, "Oh, like, I, I listened to him on, like, I found it on YouTube. I listened to it, and I was like, dude, that's fucking awesome.' Yeah. You know? What are the odds? Yeah. yeah what yeah. are they? Yeah, that's fucking crazy. For real. So then, like, the weeks went on, and I was, I asked him to come to a, a few shows. I remember Power Trip was playing Long Island, and I took the trip back to Long Island to go see Power Trip. 
And I was like begging him to come. I was like, dude, you'd fucking love this shit. Trust me, come. And he's like, yeah, it's like, I feel weird. I don't know anyone, blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, all right. And then we fucking. Little did he know, a, a Smith was going to show him around Long Island. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> so lucky. And then there was uh, like a party at a lacrosse house at our school, like off campus. And we went classic, fucking just got our asses kicked by like, 15 20 dudes like bad like pretty bad. okay it was pretty bad like we fought a couple of them but then it just turned into like we were at their house so it got pretty fucked up uh, and uh he was banged up specifically like this the and, roommate was yeah yeah and <laughs> maybe two days after that it was like blind justice i think record release it might have been their record release, or it might have been a Jersey Shore show. It was Backtrack, mm. Down to Nothing, Naysayer, Blind Justice, <sighs> maybe Outcrowd or some shit. Uh, mm -hmm. Something like that. Those block the bands out. And I was like, dude, you're coming to this fucking show. I shaved his head right before. <laughs> you know, all these lacerations all over his head from the fight. <laughs> And I remember pulling up, and I I don't remember exactly who, but someone was just like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, he just mean ass fucking look insane mother. but it's, yeah it's <laughs> genuine though like i'm not gonna spill his his uh personal shit but he's he had a hard fucking upbringing and yeah. he he's just been through a lot of shit but he's a nice dude but he is legitimately fucking crazy and nice. i right when i brought him to the show and i you know like when you're younger you bring like a group of friends to the show and like maybe you skated with them or yeah. just hung out and like in school like maybe i three out of five of them would be like, what the fuck? This is weird. And then there was the two that were like, yo, I'll be there next weekend. You know? Yeah, I yeah. get it. Yeah. He was like that. He was the one that I could tell right away. I was like, oh, he's going to come to every fucking show with me now. And he wow. did. He just kept fucking, he just kept coming to shows with me. And like, I knew he had a lot to say. And I knew it would be rough because he's never done it before. But I had the songs and I, I just felt like it was the right, like I was, dude, do this. Like you will fucking. Wow. He was like, I, I can't fucking get up in front of people and fucking say shit, blah, blah, blah. Dude, like a couple months into it, he was like, it changed. It changed. If, if you talk to him, he'll tell you fucking straight up. Like it changed him. You know what I mean? Like he's wow. like a better person ever since then. Wow. So, Dude, so that's, that's like, unreal. Yeah. So, and then um, Ron, the drummer, I went to Oneonta Punk Fest. It was like a huge fest, like every band in the world played. It felt like it was like Fury of Five and Marauder and oh, King Nine. That was the one. Yeah, we, yeah, Arms, Arms Way yeah, played yeah. it. That was the oh, one where the, the one. The, Did you guys get paid? He couldn't or? pay anybody. No, we didn't get paid. Yeah, I know. Well, I actually, heard. I should rephrase. He ended up, this poor fucking college kid ended up going bankrupt. Yeah, I know. He had to drop out of school. He had to drop out of school. Dude. Yeah. Because he of declared. a fest. Yes, he declared. <laughs> and we got two days. Yeah. We we got um like payments eventually of like, you know, eighty bucks every couple months or something. Yeah. And we, we got someone, our guarantee eventually. Someone, we got uh, it. I know someone pulled him aside at the end of the night and like took pictures of his ID and shit. And we're just like, dude, if you weren't like sixteen years old, we <laughs> fucking kill you. But well, I know I know there was a moment where I don't know if it was this kid, but it was whoever was settling. He was like, to to our camp was like, I know I'm supposed to pay you guys, but I'm really worried about paying some of these New York Dude, bands. I have the exact same fucking story. You could keep, yeah. You could keep and going, it was and James, I, it, I, you know, James was just like, yeah, pay them. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went up with uh, I forget who the fuck I went up with. I think Detriment is like James Alosio's like band back in the day from Long Island. And uh, I went up with them and was staying at like an apartment from like someone's dorm room or some shit. And the kid who booked it came, like walked into the room and we were talking and he was like, yo, is your brother in backtrack? And I was, yeah. And he's like, oh, can I talk to you quick? I was like, yeah, I guess. So he's like, oh, like, do you think you could hit him up and see um, like how much like they're expecting to get paid? And I was like, no, dude. Like, what do you, the? How do you not know? Like, yeah, right. Yeah, that's that's step one. He was like, I want to like know. Like, he was like, I, I know I gave him a number, but I want to see if like it would like you know if we could like a reduction or something. Yeah, like, it didn't do it. And I was, 
dude, you're on your own. And I was like, dude, yeah. you fucking got yourself in the deep water. And then the venue, do you remember the venue, Bo? It was like, yeah. Th- well, well, there was one that was like a strip club. Oh, and yeah, then you're right. There was you're another right. one yep, that was like the right. full thing. Worst setup in the whole world. You had to walk like 10 minutes to get to the other. Yeah. Venue. Yeah. yeah was, that was, was crazy. crazy. That was, that it's was funny crazy. seeing like, like there's that fest in Little Rock that we're going to be at. There's a thing in Oklahoma yeah. City or Oklahoma mm-hmm. that you're playing. Yeah. Both of you guys. It's crazy to see that it's crazy to see those fests and that they're like selling out and doing so good. Where when was this Anianza Fest? It was like 10 years ago. Yeah, it was probably in like 2000 and the, uh, 2015, maybe. Or something. It was like, 14. yeah, so ambitious and yeah. it did really poorly, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's just crazy that like, that kid was just, he, he was ahead of his time is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, I don't know, man. He also put like, there was, it felt like there was 200 bands on it. Even the second. Where is one. Anianta? It's Dude, upstate it, New York. It's, but it's in the middle. Fucking so up. it's like, yeah, yeah. You got, it's like you got, same distance from Syracuse, Buffalo, Albany, and the city. So you would think but, like. But not those. But yeah, but not. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Not the places where people yeah. already go see bands. Dude, so, that was fucking. I think we yeah. did that as a one off. I think we drove to New York and didn't get paid and drove back. Because <laughs> the guarantee was really good. So we were like, oh, fuck it. We don't care. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and Hangman played that too? No, no. So I rolled up there with with Detriment. And yeah. after the first day, I was like, Jesus Christ, I cannot stay here another day. I got to go yeah. fuck home. So I was looking, I was scanning the room. And I was like, who's from Long Island here? And I'm like, there was only a few people. And I saw this one dude that I would only see in the King Nine pit. And like, <laughs> dude, he would come, he would come to the show. He was with another dude and they would, they would show up for a King Nine or Backtrack, just mosh so hard and not say a word to anybody. And they would just go home. Wow. And that was, and like, I think everybody noticed it. Like when I say everybody, I mean like, just anyone that was, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like anyone yeah, they like, are. Yeah. yeah like, Yo, they're this here. fucking fans like, with yeah. the opera, dude. Like, it was a thing. Like, people threw respect on him. Like, yeah. And I saw one of them at, at Oneonta, and I was like, dude, that dude's from Long Island. I'm going to ask him. So I walk up to him. I'm like, oh, can you drive me home to Long Island? Are you leaving tonight? Are you going to stay for the extra day? And he's like, no, I'm getting the fuck out of here. And I was like, dude, I know we don't know each other, and it's like five hours, but... <laughs> can I please come back with you? Like, I don't want to stay here. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to leave in the morning. No. And I was like, all right, cool. So I met up with him in the morning and it was, that's, that's Ron, the, the drummer from Hangman. That's wow. how oh, so that's awesome. how I clicked. Up. That's how I clicked with Ron. Um, notorious King nine ass beater. So <laughs> that's all it takes guys. If you're listening, yeah. you've said it a hundred times. I've said it a hundred times. If you mosh real good, all the time, somebody's going to take notice and they're going to yeah. want to be your friend. And then you're going to join a band with them and have a friend for the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty much how Hangman started. That was like the two key pieces that. Wow. So I wrote tracks with him. A couple of like when I got home, he mentioned on the ride that he'd play drums sometimes. And I was like, oh, I got some tracks. Classic thing. Be like, oh, we'll jam some yeah. shit like sometime, yeah. you know? But then we That's actually the thing did. that does not ever pan yeah, out, but yeah, happened yeah. to pan out. But we same. actually, yeah, but we actually did meet up and it, it was sick, dude. Hangman was fucking awesome. Like, it was, dude, the tracks like, are, are yeah. really good. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think it was just like a different something about the time period that we're in right oh, now. Oh, dude. I mean, I know that you was, guys feel it. Like, it's oh, fucking, oh, yeah, it's dude. Crazy. 2000, 2015 to like 2017. Yeah. Was kind of, kind of stark. When it yeah, came yeah. to to some tours and some shows and stuff, I, I don't know what it was, but especially for like a straight up like hardcore band, yeah, I feel like yeah. like there's nothing too crazy about hang- like if you like hardcore music, like Hangman's a fucking hardcore band. Like there's nothing one hundred crazy. Yeah, there's nothing too crazy about it. It's not like the Hangman. You guys put that up while I was at I was at the gym one day and you posted like new Hangman album out. Yeah, and I listened to it the entire day. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so immediately, something about your songwriting resonated with me in a way that was like, this kid's got something. That's fucking sick, dude. <laughs> he's he's here, that. man. He's got something. Yeah, yeah. So, so when Pain of Truth went up, it was like, all right, he's he's fulfilled his destiny and he's the singer now. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's what Lumpy, uh, I think, was on too. Like, that's funny, dude. When you when yeah. he was saying, like, yo, it's your time to like, you know, do the thing, like go from yeah, the yeah. game, blah, blah, blah. Like yeah. the same type of vibe that he was Because there was a charisma to the way you played guitar, you know. It was like clearly you were part of you're part of the show rather than just a guy playing songs. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Which that guy, you always look at him and go, That guy's gonna sing in a band, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> so that being pain of truth makes a lot of sense that that kind of became your Hell this yeah. is your, this is your pain of truth is has arrived now yeah i feel like yeah definitely um you know it was this pandemic project that turned right. into yeah. the a full-time touring entity yeah. it was also a good way to like like not i didn't know it at the time i just thought that's just the way it is which it is but like i learned a lot from being in hangman and like dude, we played shows for no money, like yeah. multiple days in a row, you know, like straight up, like emptying my bank account. I quit my job to do that. Oh. And like I said, it's not like it was the craziest shows we were playing. We were just doing it. Cause we were getting a little older and we we're like, damn, like we all just want to tour, even if it's not like the biggest thing. You know what I mean? We still just want to do it to like say we did it, you know, yeah. Absolutely. And it definitely taught me a lot. And, and it makes me appreciate, like if I would just, if Pain and Truth was my first band, I'd just be like, "Oh, this was fucking easy. What the fuck?" Like, <laughs> yeah, it makes it, it it makes it a lot more um, like I could appreciate it. You know, like when I play a crazy, if we play a crazy show, like I'm like, "This is fucking insane." If we play a show to a hundred kids and there's kids singing along, I'm still like, "Dude, it's fucking crazy." You know what I mean? You paid That's your true. dues for sure. Well, it's it's crazy yeah. that like you were doing Hangman and you were just like just want to tour, just want to do it, want to, you know, grind. And, and it didn't pan out the way that you would have obviously preferred. Yeah. Yeah. And then this thing that you're like, ah, all right. Dude, when right? you're, you're kind of not in that mindset and that yeah. always how it happens. Yeah. yeah. What? That's amazing. Yeah. Cause you, you're not, you, when the pressure is off, something magical happens. Yeah. That's true. Sometimes. Sometimes. True. It really Pain is just is kind that. of, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And now you're, you know, headlining sandwiched in between a Colin Young fucking weekend yeah. <laughs> in Oklahoma. And oh, just shit, like, I didn't even notice that you're playing yeah. both days, right? Or is oh, it yeah. one day you're playing both? No, it's both days. Both days. <laughs> yeah. No, we do. I meant that. I meant that in, a, <laughs> in parentheses. I'm tired. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, closed yeah. Parentheses. Um, and having, you know, some of the most memorable moments from a lot of the fests that we've been to what we've seen painted truth a so dozen times. <laughs> times over the last year in different States. Every time it's, and it's never been crazy. bad and it's never Which, been bad. It's awesome. Fuck. Yeah. Which I, when we did this, when we did the mini in Boston, I think you had seven songs out. Mm -hmm. You probably played nothing but good shows. Yeah. You've toured Europe now. Oh, mm -hmm. has, has that changed? You played some. You played a couple stinkers, or what in Europe? Anywhere. Yeah. Dude. Have you played yeah. a bad show yet? You have. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, how, how was? How did you find Europe? Like, mainly, I know you, you had been there Europe. before, but mainly in Europe. Like, we played like a couple that were like. But honestly, I don't know if it's just the Hangman thing. Like, I never really get off stage, and I'm like, "Yo, that was." Because either way, even if it wasn't like a crazy, crazy show, it's still. Like, dude, I'm in fucking Germany. I'm in like, Bauckham, dude. Yeah, That's here's, crazy. here's the yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I, I share, yeah. I share that so, mentality. But the, the problem that I have is yeah. then you'll randomly play like Stuttgart, and it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like then you will have a, a, sh a show where it's like, oh, I could be in Richmond right now for all I know. Like, everyone's going insane. It's yeah, always, sure. it's always like some fucking army guys who like got a yeah. weekend pass yeah. from a, a yeah. base that they're stationed at. And so th then you're just like, what the fuck then? Well, what just is every, every country has a Springfield, Missouri. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. They're all out there. Wow. No distance. Well, hey, no. Springfield, Missouri proved itself as a place bands needed to play in the, in the uh, early 2010s. So no diss to Springfield, Missouri. There's a Springfield, every state. Love, a, love me a Springfield. You know, so it's any, any state, but I know it, that's a really well said. So touring Europe, a pain of truth. Touring yeah. in general, where your your thing is guest vocals, yeah, <laughs> which I feel like for at a fest, super easy to pull off. Definitely, there's a billion yeah. guys there; they're dying to sing a part. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that like touring? Honestly, like, what, all right, so when we first were recording just the first band of songs and, like, the idea of all the guest spots came on, it was, like, the pan, like, I, would, I didn't picture playing shows it, with it. You yeah. know what I mean? I just, like, yeah. thought it would be cool to, like, have it down, you know, like, and recorded and everything. And we started playing shows, and the parts that are guest vocals, I see more kids singing along to those parts. So, like... Mm-hmm. I think it kind of it's it could be rough sometimes. Like I've played a show where I just sing all the parts. Like in Europe, like but on, honestly, not even because if, if we're in when we were in Europe, like we had tsunami there, and they all pick up a track and yeah. like who you got, tour with is important. Like we're, for, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it's not yeah. obviously we're not going to roll out of the, out of the van with like Freddie Madball and Justice with us at every show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. But um, well, I wanted to I wanted to ask you about even just getting all of these contributions, like we had a hard time scheduling and, and getting the three of us to sit down and talk. Right. Yeah. yeah how did me, you fucking, me though. <laughs> uh, how did you coordinate? What is it? Nine out of nine, nine out of the 10 tracks I have guest spots. Cause one doesn't 10 have a 10 out of 11. I think right? it's 10 out of 11. 10 out of 11. Yeah. I mean, like, it seems like a nightmare. It, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like it just, is what it is so i I didn't really we don't really think about it as like a nightmare because it's uh, like the end result like knowing like that what it's going to be it's like all right well it's gonna very true like to to me you know i i I think it's dope personally i think you guys in the other one you know i think like i always thought guest vocals and shit was just cool i love hip-hop so like it doesn't really seem that crazy to me and i see kids Mm -hmm. like oh like they must be compensating for like shitty music or something like something like that, you know? And like, it's, they, it's, it's just a thing. No other hardcore no, band just, is doing. And that's why yeah, my, it's awesome. my thing is like, it just literally doesn't even have to be like, it doesn't have to be like, it doesn't have to exist. It does. I made it. Cause I think it's hilarious that there's yeah. a million people and it fucking worked <laughs> and it just recorded and it's, yeah, it's out. So like, do you have you know, a, like, you know, does that just sound like stonerish or something? No, no, but, no. Like when no. I read something like that, I'm like, what the fuck do you care? Like that was that was Socratic, brother. It doesn't yeah. have to be, but it is. <laughs> but it is. Yeah. Uh, do yeah, you have yeah. a do you have a favorite guest spot on the new record? Is there is there one where you were like, damn, like yeah, for, like the Freddie Madball one, dude? Yeah, yeah. I was. I mean, you have like, so many parallels to his journey that I have to imagine. Does he yeah. know that? Yeah, yeah. We like yeah because he toured with Backtrack a bit i think they did like a few europe runs together so um dude i i, I was trying to meet him like you know yeah. i see mad balls since i was pretty young I, i've seen them a few times when i was younger and i always fucked with mad ball always like that would vital would come over you gotta listen to mad ball you gotta listen to mad ball. <laughs> like before i even knew hey, you know and then what do you listen to i told you he's the, the best i mean him yeah. as a spirit guide is like oh fuck yeah dude. he's gonna teach you the passion the yeah, unteachable yeah, yeah, passion yeah, yeah. yeah he's like key piece and like me being in it you know but you sound really, like him too there's yeah, a really cool thing cool. on that track to, to sounding like him there's a really cool thing on that track where the vocals kind of blend and then like it, it, it likes kind of it, you know it'll switch through a phrase from one to the other yeah yeah and i think that's like a really cool touch because like it'll be like sentence of only one sentence with both sentence with only the other one I got as you. it like yeah. as it like goes through the verse i think yeah. that's like fucking awesome because that's yeah, unique dude. too you don't hear that in hardcore bands yeah it was sick too because i mean it wasn't they were all super organic like the way they came about like i wasn't sending a million emails out or something like hey what's up i'm michael from this band we do yeah. this and it wasn't <laughs> you know like if if I linked up with Freddie two years ago and I had a dope song that sounded like Hold It Down, I'd be like, hey, dude, do you want like, you know, if we were talking about music and shit, I'd be like, hey, I got this track. But it just happened to be like, we were literally in the studio in Chicago. We just finished that song. And me and him were going back on Instagram back and forth uh, through the band accounts, like trying to work out a couple dates that we were doing. And he was just like, oh, dude, like, I'm, I have, like, shitty service or something. Like, it would work better if we text. So then he sent me the, his number, and I was like, fuck, Freddie 
Freddie Mabel's phone number. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> so then I started. So then we started texting, and I just kept. I was listening to all the tracks, trying to figure out um, where to like put the them. Rest, yeah, like what, where, where to place them and shit. And I was just like, dude, this song just reminds me of a Hold It Down like era uh, Mabel song. Yeah. And so I just so you figure it. it out after you don't you don't approach writing like I'm gonna write this song for Freddie to sing it. No, 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 no. But I did. That'd be fun when I when <laughs> I did like I didn't write all these songs. It was collaborative, um, yeah. but I did write that riff, the opening riff to it. It does have a, a very yeah. hold it yeah, down yeah. Like feel when I wrote like it, the song. I was definitely hold it down. thinking about like hold it down and like oh like i need that that was one of the last songs we wrote for besides acting up because like i said earlier that was in the studio but that might have been the last song that we wrote and i i'd probably have a text to ridge like dude like i've been trying to write like a hold it down track like all these different riffs i have and i just can't get it like do you want to try to like do something like try to like write something like that and it's it never works like when you're trying to like like trying like that you it know has to just happen. but, but yeah. like listening to all the other songs like if you listen to not through blood without you and me on it i don't know like it's it's there's something like it's just a very like straightforward hardcore track mm. and like i felt like it was missing that so like going it's a good in, intermission between yeah yeah like because yeah, like, it's kind of like the first couple tracks are like hey here's here's pain of truth this is what we do yeah and then a little splice of something different and yeah. then back to back yeah. to formula. Yeah, exactly. So like I felt like it just needed that. And then like I said, I we finished the the recording. I was listening to all the tracks, trying to like figure out where to place them. And then me and him were just texting and I, I was listening to the song. I was like, I'm just gonna fucking send it to him. Like what's yeah. it gonna like the lyrics were already on there. Um and I sent it to him and he was like, dude, this track is fucking crazy. He was away somewhere, so he was like not doing he was like on a in the airport or something so he had time to listen to it he listened to it right away and i was like yo like would you want to hop would you want to hop on the track and he was just like yeah 100 percent. he was like let me write let me just like write rewrite some of the lyrics or whatever and then he texted me another like two minutes later and i was like ah fuck it i just listened to it again they're fucking dope i'm just gonna sing them oh, that's awesome like, that's fucking it's dope. so sick yeah. where did you record in chicago uh the brick top Oh, you recorded with Andy? With Andy, yeah. With Andy. I had no idea. That was, yeah. you know, the first five Harm's Way records. Yeah, he, 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 mentioned there. It. he mentioned it to us. That guy's a fucking man. He made oh, it yeah. so crazy, you know? Yeah, Did yeah. he mix it too? Um, Dude, I'm the fucking worst. Wow. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> You're amazing. I have no idea. You're real NYHC, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> I, bet, I, I bet the yeah. internet knows. Us Let's asking see. Jeff G uh, last week where Declination was recorded, he was like, I don't know. It was a big, yeah. that well, was, was all I, that was the <laughs> perfect long, answer. Yeah, but how long? That's hilarious that he just has no idea, though. That's awesome. I love that. Like, yeah, that's that what I want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, oh, I, I want, no I want the new wave of New York hardcore to tell me, I don't know who mixed this shit. Yeah, it sounds dope, know. though. I don't know who mixed it, honestly. It was. Awesome. Respect, whoever it is. It was <laughs> recorded and mixed by Andy, mastered by Bill at Azimuth. Oh, okay. But yeah, Andy mixed so it. So Andy did, Andy done good. Andy yeah, Nelson. Andy Shout really out, good. Andy Nelson. Yeah, Chicago HC, man. basically. Chicago HC, Weekend Nachos, recorded weekend nachos, fucking yeah. every goddamn man. Do you find it, um, was was putting Ridge in the band a a power maneuver to have like the best nah, contemporary dude. shirt artist? Dude, yeah, like it's so fucked up because we didn't, but he is, <laughs> like I, it wasn't a thought and none of this was a thought. It's none so brilliant. It's a thought, dude. Like he sent me the artwork with the fucking dog on it, which is just a logo with yeah. on an image, like a JPEG, yeah. like a random Google image. And <laughs> um, like I said, he sent me that one track, the L I N Y H C track, and it was only me, Nick, like killer Nick. Did you ask him to? Who? Did you ask Ridge to send you that song? No, no, no. He sent me the artwork and the track was in the same email. It was like, hey, this is like, if what wanted, if? He was, no, no. <laughs> he, he didn't even want in. He didn't, I don't wow. think he wanted in. He he just said, yeah, hey, I have this. That's what I said. He's got a whole fucking thing. Like, crazy. I have, I have no idea how that ended up in that email. That's, that's fucking yeah, crazy. No, Ooh, no. Did I, I accidentally Oops. dropped this like incredible new song yeah, in yeah. there. Was that me? He was just like, oh dude, yeah, this, like if you want to use this, you could use it. I've had, like, it kind of fits the same style. I've had it for a while. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure like he ripped off like if you listen to it, it's like a ripped off like figure four part or some shit like mm. the intro to it or, or something. Because what kudos we, to you for saying that publicly, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't think he'd give a fuck. He'd probably be psyched, honestly. But figure four would probably be psyched. They'll yeah. No, we. Yeah. Li- I don't. I'm not like too familiar with like the lineup of who they are, but we we were somewhere and Ridge was like, "Yo, this is." So and so he played like he never met him either. So like they were like hitting it off, and I think Ridge told him like, "Yo, listen to the first track that we opened with. Like it's probably mm. sound uh, the guy. The guy is like super following us awesome and shit." Well, Andrew, like, Andrew's friend of the show. So Andrew, if yeah. you're listening, no, he know, one. no, no, he knows, he knows too, because he put Beautiful. Andrew was putting on for us from like day one, and I guess nice. I'm pretty sure it's because he heard that song and was like. <laughs> Pardon this interruption. We have got to tell you about a brand new sponsor today. Take it away, Bo. Bo? Oh, I could barely hear you with this Loop earplug in my ear. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, Loop, for sponsoring today's episode. Really excited about this. They're awesome earplugs. They're very comfortable. They come in a little case that you can put on your keys or whatever. So sleek. Super sleek. They got all kinds. They got different tip uh, sizes and everything, so you can make sure it, it stays in there like you want. Every um, musician should be focused on ear health. If you work in this field at all, your ears are your job at the end of the day, and Loop is here to hold you down. Therefore, Hardlore is here mm. to hold you down. You can use the link in the description below for 10% off worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you so much, Lou. It is also Manscaped oh, time, baby. Is it ever? Man, I, I've been making it a new thing where <laughs> I just, I tour the islands every day with my whole Manscaped catalog. How do you mean? I use every single one of them <laughs> every day. <laughs> just, just for consistency's sake, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm a bigger fan than ever. A year and a half into this relationship. I use it every day. Every day. We got to try the new one. The shaver. Dude, it looks awesome. It does look cool. The handyman, it's called. Maybe maybe next week we'll have some handymen for for our new episode. We could certainly try. Manscaped. Code Hardlore for 20% off plus free shipping. You know the drill, man. They got it. We all. don't mess around. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Manscaped. It is also whatnot time, baby. <gasps> We're going to have a very special yeah. whatnot next week. Yes. Uh, we will provide more details about that next week. But for a very good cause, near and dear to our hearts, we're, we got test presses. We got shirts. We got all kinds of stuff. One-off whatnot. things and random old shirts, stuff you can't mm. get anywhere. And it's like watching a live podcast episode with a chat and we interact and we hang out. And you can't ever see it again, so you got to be there to experience it. That's right. It's an elite experience. Whatnot is like Twitch meets Cameo meets eBay. These live episodes, these live experiences where you get to buy stuff at the end of the day from Mm -hmm. supports people directly. And in this case, on our case next week, Mm -hmm. support a very important cause to us directly. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, You click the link in the description for $15 off your first purchase. You will not regret it. What not the place to be. We've got one more set of ads, Bo. No kidding. This is an interesting one. What do we got? Our buddies at Danny Wimmer Presents. Uh They got Louder Than Life and Aftershock Fest coming up. Mm. They wanted us to tell you guys about them. You were at Aftershock. I was at Aftershock last year, which is the biggest music fest, biggest like hard rock metal festival on the West Coast. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. You had, it was you four said days. You had, a, you had a great time. Like one hundred fifty thousand people. I think. Oh, yeah, man. And last year it was like Kiss, uh, Danzig. Yeah, that was one day. Yeah, that was you, crazy. You said MCR rocked, <laughs> dude. MCR was crazy, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Who's playing uh, this, this year? year this year, uh, louder than life. We got Foo Fighters, <laughs> Tool, Rancid. Code Orange, Pantera, Jesus Peace, Turnstile, Green Day, and over 90-plus more bands. What? Aftershock, a bunch of those same bands are playing, minus, mm-hmm. I think, Code Orange and Jesus Peace. Mm-hmm. But, man, if we weren't at the Coldest Life reunion, I'm telling you, we'd be yeah. at Aftershock. Yeah. But we'll be at the Coldest Life reunion. <laughs> Back to the episode. 
I heard so, Ridge fucks with fucks with lo- the Lord. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. That's, he loves him. Yeah. Damn. Like no joke. Really? Yeah. Hey. Like, like he fucks fuck. with God like that. Yeah, if you don't fuck around <laughs> with that shit. Him and Josh Damn. from Life's Question too. Wow. Yeah, so he'd like be they, pissed like, if I was like, damn, you fuck with God? He'd be like, yo, don't say that. No, no. He'd be like, fuck yeah, I fuck with God. <laughs> right? Right. He'd be like, fuck That's... yeah, I fuck with God. You don't? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. You fuck with God is the funniest yeah, way. Yeah. To... Hey, you fuck with God? Damn. Yeah, yeah. He's, so, he's, he's able such to, an enigma. He's able to draw a, a revolver in inside someone's mouth oh yeah that was you know? that was i sent him i sent him like a picture i had it on my phone it was like i'll send maybe i'll send you this uh, never mind i'm not gonna send it to you but it, <laughs> the picture that i originally sent him looked like shit it was uh-huh. so bad and i was like i know he's gonna be mad when i send this to him because he's gonna be like what the fuck do you want me to do with this but i wanted it to be the artwork so bad um so then I how sent did he do that dude do you know the picture where it comes from or no no. Me neither, honestly. I just got out of my mind one day. <laughs> I was hoping I was hoping you you were gonna tell me because I don't know where No, it's dude. From, but he, he he fucked with it like a lot. Like I don't even know if you'd really recognize the original picture at this point because he added so much shit to it. But yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah. One me of the either. single arts looks like Chris. No, it looks like this dude from fucking it looks like a character from that movie Hook. With the Robin crying Williams. one? Yes. It looks like the guy that they stuff in the box on the pirate. The boo ship. box? Dude, that's Glenn, that's Glenn Close. That is Glenn that, Close. That's Glenn Close. It's a cameo. It, it dressed up as a man. It is. That's exactly yeah. who I'm talking about. It, in the boo scene, box. It looks like it looks like that. <laughs> I just ruined that. I just ruined that single art for anyone who's seen Hook. <laughs> Was that it. intentional? Because I know Chris oh. Christopher's a big hook guy. No, he, he is. No, but uh Bridge, <laughs> that's a picture of that's Ridge. And like one of his homies from St. Mary's County, and he like combines their faces together. <laughs> yeah, That's he's incredible. crazy, crazy man. Yeah, but yeah. man, what a what a gift you you have having him in your band just for yeah, dude. We didn't even think about it like that, and it's just funny how everyone just clicked together, not yeah. really knowing one another, you know. And everyone just and everyone's different too. Like none of us are are the same. <clears throat> Who's the craziest fucking, guy? In this band full of crazy guys, like actually crazy, not like yeah, you know, he's scary, but like where you talk I, to him and you're like, "Yo, you're a little insane," you know. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I feel like it, like differently. It's all of us. Like yeah, Nick is yeah, a sweetheart. You know, Nick like, is a, <laughs> he's a he's his not, name is Killa. Uh, yeah, his name's Killa. <laughs> so I mean, that's him. Yeah, Nick Barker, the drummer, is he's he's a crazy guy too. He's, he's fucking, a good drummer. He's so good at drums, and like, he's a crazy guy. I don't know. I was Zach's just, Zach's the angel, right? Zach is um, he's fucking, he's pretty crazy too. But yeah, he's he's <laughs> he's sweet. I don't know, man. It's hard to like describe. I don't know. It's hard to put into words. But I, Ridge, I guess Ridge I Ridge is like, probably the co- the kookiest. Right? Ridge is definitely like the most character. You know, like yeah. he's he's one of them kind. He reminds me of the dude from. Uh, Whose lines it anyway? I always forget his fucking name. The tall guy, Colin Mockery. No, or Ryan no, the, Styles. Uh, Ryan Styles. Yeah, yeah, Ryan Styles. He is Ryan Styles. Like when Ryan Styles dies, they should hit Ridge up to take his spot. <laughs> Straight up, it would work. <laughs> who's oh, that's the, awesome. Who's it in God's Hate? The craziest guy. Yeah, it's kind of secretly Alec. It's secretly Alec. Yeah, he has actual PTSD from. War, war, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I forgot. I don't really know him that well, but I did hear that he like, served. That's, that's fucking yeah. He's in Afghanistan. That's why you don't have no knees anymore. You know, yeah. he wow. blew him out moshing to carry on in the barracks. <laughs> <laughs> legend. Yeah. He's a legend. Um, yeah. man, was there a European country or city that you played on that tour? You did. Did you just call me Matt? No, I said no, man. man. <laughs> I thought you said Matt. So Matt, when you <laughs> toured when you toured Europe, was there a city that like blew you away? How good it was that you made you think like, holy shit, my my New York hardcore band just had an insane reaction in Slovakia, yeah. uh, Warsaw, Poland, Ooh. like all the Rattel dudes and all them. Josh was, hard. 
Dude, the main the Rattel Prez fucking broke his arm. Like Whoa. moshing during acting. On up. purpose? Like he was just moshing really hard and just to acting up too. It was a brand new track. Yeah. He was just fucking popping off. He's an older dude too, so he um, is the one who I saw I witnessed do the gnarliest mosh maneuver I've ever seen. What was it? Where mid spin took somebody's glasses off and smoked them. Crushed so, him and kept Mosh. So sick. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> one of a kind. Those dudes are like still crazy, like how far away people could be, but like they get they, it. Yeah, yeah, like fully We're the understand same. it. Fully understand it. Um, and and the show was like scary. Like I know Body was in the pit for the pot set, and afterwards he was like, dude, Body's a hard Mosher too. Yeah, you know? he is big and, time. And he was like, prolific. Dude, that was. That show was fucked up. Like, that was crazy. Wow. I know uh, you've traveled a lot, met, met a bunch of people just, just because of the kind of the nature of what hardcore is, you know, yeah. and having brothers who travel a lot. You, you've met a bunch of people. Have you been to Japan before? No, I'm going Friday, though. I'm leaving that's, Friday. Why, that's why I bring it up. The, yeah. the guys over there who get it, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. It's it's gonna be your most favorite place. I know. I've been told that so many times. I'm just dreading like the. Tra- I'm not a huge uh, like plane guy or traveling guy, so that's literally the only part. But I know the second I get there, I'm gonna be so sorry. Dude, you oh, just watched right. The Departed like six times. You'll be yeah, 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 yeah. yeah straight up, straight up. I, and then I, that that was the only place I wasn't ready to leave. So I imagine yeah. you'll be yeah. Wait, same. you weren't ready to leave? I was not ready to leave when the tour ended. Damn, that's crazy. And every other time, I'm like, "Get me oh, fucking get home. Me home!" Yeah, I'm that guy. I'm that guy. I yeah, keep yeah. my cool. I never let it really show too much. Yeah, but that's me, a hundred percent. I want to lay down, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to lay yeah. down and hang out with my cat and like. Well, you have a You love a cat, dude. Yeah, dude. You got yeah. a good cat though. Yeah. See, dude, that's the thing. I got a shitty one. Oh, okay. So you're a cat. Terrible guy. cat. Yeah, I love. I don't cats, believe man. in one side or the other. By the way. Dude. I have my two cats, but I love a good dog. Are you kidding me? Oh, dude, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm a full, I'm, I just like pets in general. Yeah. There's no, Same. like, whenever I talk about cats and someone is like, I like cats, but I like dogs, too. It's like, yeah, no shit. I fucking like yeah. dogs, too, bro. You know? <laughs> I would love a good fish, <laughs> I, you know? I, yeah. I, dude, dude, you're sh- talking to the, are you kidding me? I have. Like are you four, the fish king? Dude, I have, like, four fish tanks. <laughs> it's fucked up. It's fucked up. Wow. It's fucked. I fully, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I got so involved <laughs> in that shit. It's so crazy. You're Don't fishman. even start. Don't even start. I kind of just did. <laughs> did you? Oh, no, no. I'm saying oh, buying you. a fish. Yeah, don't get it. Oh, there. I won't do oh, that. Oh, don't. Yeah, I had some, it's, and it's expensive. Dude, it's it's, it's so fucking. awesome, but it's it's a lot. It's a lot of work. They start eating each other. I don't know what I'd do in that scenario. Yeah, they, yeah, they just die, too. They'll the right, just... You got to get the right ones. Yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, dude, I have I have like four. No, I got yeah, I have three fish tanks. Tanks? Tanks? Yeah, tanks. Three tanks. Three so you're a uh, you're a fish hobbyist. Yes. An enthusiast. <laughs> yes. What are the no, odds like, that I would? Bring I'm not that up? super. I know. I'm not super. Uh, just like with anything else, like technical about it. Like I don't uh, really know all the names of the pH fish. balance and shit. Yeah, yeah. Nah, like you have to kind of get involved in that because then they die. So like, yep. so I do know a little bit about it. Okay. Like anytime I go on tour, I come home and the fish tanks are like literally Filthy. as green as they could be. Because uh, my brother Danny, he's a sweetheart. He tries his best, I'm sure. But it, is he still playing music with anybody? Dude, my brother Danny <laughs> is so good at writing songs. It's absolutely fucking insane. He's only been like his only active band, like really was backtrack. And like yeah. obviously he came into that. Um, but he writes like he loves like Dag Nasty and like a lot of DC, like really DC, and he loves Ramones. Hardcore punk. Like he is the Ramones. Like you could ask him anything about the Ramones and he'll fucking know it. Like, and that's like from when he was nine years old, like him and my neighbor, they uh they in the in the basement they had like a printout from like Microsoft Word of like 70 Ramon songs and mm. 
Sean would just point to one with the stick and then they'd play it and then just point to another and play it. Like for and what years, the hell's he doing now? Dude, uh, he's he has a new thing that he has a lot of shit recorded, you know? And this one I told him a million times. I was like, dude, you just gotta fucking get some people together. I might try to like I kinda wanna play drums for it. Nice. But I don't I don't wanna not dude, give it God, dude, dude, God. <laughs> Yeah, but like I'm not a full time drummer. And yeah. I almost feel like it deserves like a drummer, you know. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying? Oh shit! Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit him up about the dag nasty thing. Oh, dude, but, you sure? I, I want to sing, play guitar in a band like that so bad. Really? Just do it. <laughs> the reaction. Really? No, really? no, it's it. It's just it's kind of rare, honestly. I I love I that shit. Some I love. Can like, I say? Really know of those bands that those were like. Not even that I got into. Those were just the bands that I was shown first. You know, mm. like that was like the bridge yeah. from like being into like Green Day and Blink-182 and then. So like, even with Chris and Danny as your hardcore guides, you still were into Blink-182 and Green Day first? Early though. I'm saying like literally. Yeah. Like, oh, like can, five, like, six. Yeah. Like, yeah. like five, six years old. Like I loved all that shit. And then. Well, by the, time, by the time I was 10, Christopher was in the band Vitalo. And then I <laughs> understood the idea of like starting, which is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. It's so like funny. Starting it's so bands. Funny. Uh, and I was like, oh shit. Like I could actually just like start a band and like play a show. Like I don't have to figure out a way to like get to Jones Beach Amphitheater and like figure yeah, out. Yeah. No, you just play. do yeah. it. Like when yeah. I was younger, though, I was like, how the fuck do you even go about like young, young, like what I'm saying, like six years old, like. Going to see bands at Jones Beach and for theater, like Newfound Glory and shit, and Green yeah. Day, Blink One Two, and fucking wondering like how the fuck do you fucking go about doing that? But it's funny that like yeah, I, I'm I'm a few years older than you, Michael, and a few less older than you, Colin. But like the Enema of the State came out when I was in I was like 10, fifth grade, mm-hmm. and I feel like that that <laughs> that record probably affected. I think that is the answer for what we were talking about a while ago, Colin, of like which record impacted the most people. It was over with in my kindergarten class for sure. Yeah. It, it's, it was it's popping, just, dude. It's hilarious. No, for real, though. For real. <laughs> I hated it. Yeah, oh, you, I, and I get but that, you but like. never liked it? No, I was already rocking with Sepultura at that time, you know? That's crazy. I knew what I wanted. I wanted. He has fucking, the most backward story out of. You have, I would say, a, a pretty classic story. Yeah. He has Michael. the most backwards. Mine is weird, but I want it da 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 immediately, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I got lucky. Yeah. That is fucking awesome. Because sometimes, like, <laughs> like, I'll talk to people now and, like, I'll be you in our, like, they'll look at me and be like, dude, like, you had it good. Because their first shows were, like, going to Warp Tour and just moshing for, like, yeah. Attack Attack or something. Yes. Yeah. You know I mean? Which and baffles me. Yeah. How do you? How, which, like, I, you know, I'm glad to hear that they got Dude, here somehow. Yeah. No, the, I totally agree. That's not the conversation. I'm not. I'm yeah. not bashing anyone. I'm no, of still, course. Whatever. But how did you get here from that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Did, yeah. But, what is the domino there? It's crazy to like even go like because yeah, like I said, people will be like, oh yeah, like that's crazy. You just got straight into hardcore. I, I really didn't. I was in, like listening to punk music. Then yeah. Danny was listening to like Minor Threat and Dag and Descendants and like faster shit. And yeah. That's and then that was still like um so out of reach, I felt like like a show, you know, like going to like mm. one of those types of shows. Like I've been to backyard shows and shit and some shit like that, like with Christopher and his bands, but then when Vitalo asked me to be in backtrack, that was like the first like pit, like hard pit, you know, yeah, like hard yeah. mosh pit, like everyone in the room with the same agenda, not like some people on the sides like skipping around like not knowing what was going on it was like everyone in the room was fucking moshing hard and like right. <laughs> receiving and giving out beatings and like no one was fighting it was just what it was and it was like dude yeah. the way i remember it i remember being like on the computer with him and he like pulled up a, a video of them either practicing somewhere or playing a show to like a very small amount of people oh is this he, backtrack starting this is backtrack starting yeah. okay okay and, yeah sorry and uh he was like, oh, I think I'm going to do this. Like, my talent wants me to play guitar. And I was like, oh, it's sick. And so the first show I saw with, with them, yeah. Um, Pretty much the same for me 
was was like Taylor being in a band that was playing shows. And it was like, I got to go check this out. So was yeah. Taylor just already into like heavy ass shit? Is that how you got? Yeah. That? So he's 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 my guide through everything. Yeah. And he's he's a reluctant guide at that time, you know. Mm -hmm. Whereas like what he found laying around, I would I would I would then find. Yeah. And he would share some things with me, but then also you know fuck you get out of my room. Mm -hmm. And in that and you know that at that age like Sepultura and Lincoln Park are the same thing. Yeah. Right. So he's the guy who's going to tell you, like, no, they're not, idiot. Here's the difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you learn, like, okay, you're right. I'm an idiot, and these these things are different. Yeah. Um, but then they, but then eventually we grow up, and they go, oh, you, you know what? Can you play this while I play this, and yeah. just so I can see how it sounds. Yeah. And then you're in the band. Yeah, yeah. Like you know nah, what? That's fucking awesome. You're pretty have you, good. Have you started a band with with? Have you considered starting a band with the two of them? Uh, yeah, we've like. We've talked about it a bunch of times, like just like starting a random ass hardcore band and just seeing okay. like what it was. You got to call it Vitalo. <laughs> yeah. Bring oh back Vitalo. Just dude. bring it back. Dude, bring it back again. The reunion. Yeah. <laughs> dude, unreal fucking time period though. And what I were the other even, Long Island guys like as as guides for you as a youngin? Because it seems like they embraced you very young. The Dan Seelys, the Vitalos, the, the Lopez's. It's funny. <laughs> like, I don't want them to listen to it and be like, what are you talking about? But <laughs> like, I personally feel like I looked up to them immediately. All of them. Yeah. You know I mean, they were like the first shows I was going to, they were all like definitely looking out for me and shit. But, and I think this is a good thing. Like the way they yeah. treated me the, in terms of the way they treated me. Like I personally don't feel like I was ever like handed anything too much. Like as a band, like in a band, it wasn't like, right. Oh, let's just, like I, I had to like sit on the sidelines just as much as like all the other young bands. You know what I mean? Sure. Which was, yeah. which was cool. You know? Um, no, I, I wouldn't say that hangman had any particular no, like, exactly, advantages or exa anything. Exactly. Exactly. So like sometimes people like when they first hear about it, they're like, Oh, this kid's just probably got into it or like probably has it easy, you know, like didn't really have to do much to get, but it was, huh. it was I was like any, any other kid that was going to shows at the time, but they definitely always, looked out for me you know what i mean and as i grew older i would dude i was such a little dickhead when i was young you know like <laughs> fucking just like 15 years like 15 years old in a show like getting wasted and just fucking being stupid but i think like a lot of them saw me grow up a little bit and it's just i you know it's just a mutual respect there you know yeah, yeah, so, yeah um but yeah i love all those dudes um and you know there's other people too that aren't even necessarily like so like tommy from silent majority the singer from silent majority he grew up in Lindenhurst. um and he was always like a key piece like always looked up to him he had i had another similar story where like i got left at a show like i didn't have a ride home and him and this dude rob that uh was from long island he passed away um but they both were like walking by the Chinese food spot. I was sitting outside and they're like, Oh, are you, are you Chris's little brother? And I was like, Yeah. They're like, Well, you just, you need to ride home or you just waiting out here? I was like, oh, I'm just you waiting sitting here eating Chinese coming. food or what? Huh? <laughs> you just sit, sitting here eating Chinese yeah, food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was chilling out. Like, no, it was just, I actually asked the Chinese food place if I could chill in there because it was like kind of in a weird spot on Long Island and it was in like a shopping mall and the, the venue shut down that was the only other thing open it was, uh, it was probably like 11 30 at night or something it was on like wow. night. Yeah. and i was like fucking 14 years old so <laughs> and they just they stopped and hung out with me like the whole night and that was and that guy he's not the easiest guy to talk to like for every you know what i mean it's not like he's just sure. talking so i was i always looked up to that and like always i brought that up recently when they were going through everything with with rich that passed away rest in peace mm -hmm. rich but yeah, like just that scenario and shit like that, just like a small act like that. It was like, yeah, like they could have just been like, oh, we don't fucking give a shit about yeah. the kid was fucking balanced. But like little things like that. And uh, that's silly, how you nurture fucking, the young hardcore kids, you know? Yeah. You just be um, nice. Just be nice to these fuckers. Yeah, they're yeah. here to, they're, this is, this could change. Every single sentence you say to like a 13, 14, 15 year old hardcore kid could change their life. Or yeah, change their perspective, sure. or scare them away. That, yeah, yeah. Make them. This is this is the community. That being said, if you do it, I feel I've seen it happen. Like, I feel like you, if you 
like right off the bat to start like giving him too much though or like you know what i'm saying like like yeah, yeah. booking them or like putting them on every show yeah. or something or just like they disappear in a yeah, year they, yeah like they might like just think they're hot shit too quick and just fucking you gave them the down. cheat codes they beat the game too damn early. yeah yeah. So, <laughs> yeah so there is like a fine line there i feel like um and i feel like they all these dudes like I don't know if they knowingly did it, but I was always in that spot. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I always, like, they never gave me too much uh, and let me, like, figure it out on my own, I guess, you know? Mm. Which, that feels good, too, especially, like, now that I'm, like, throwing respect on her. It's like, absolutely, you know, it feels good, obviously. So, Mm. yeah, I love all those dudes. John Bang's the fucking man. Oh, Uh, love him. Let me ask you this, Michael. If If I asked you your Long Island music, Mount Rushmore. Ah. The, your big four, Long Island. Now, does that in include the city? As you said, they're kind of one thing now. No. So strictly Long Island. Long Island. Island. All right. Ron Konkuma. <laughs> <laughs> Lindenhurst, et cetera. All, all the others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, backtrack. They're kind of, they kind of like yeah. Half yeah. Automatic, automatic. 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 Yeah. Backtrack, vision disorder. Oh, Sleep, sleeper pick. Dude, it's a hard fucking question because I feel like I'm going to forget someone that's like important. Yeah, but you, you know what? Wait, what how, comes and to- how many faces are on, are on Mount Rushmore? Uh, Four. Twelve. <laughs> 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 it's it's kind of like whatever comes to mind yeah. first is the answer. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's- All right. Backtrack, which is sort of King Nine, Neglect, Sound Majority. I love it. Yeah. I how, love many, it. how many faces though are on the- there's four but I, you know <laughs> what <laughs> on long island there's five <laughs> yeah it's long <laughs> as hell it, you know, yeah, long island, island mount rushmore is yeah <laughs> that's sure. how it works to think about tell me about um your relationship with lumpy and days <laughs> yeah because you said lumpy is kind of like He's a key it. role to the band nah, he is. He is. did he play in hangman no nah, he wasn't in hangman i don't even think he liked hangman that much <laughs> <laughs> oh shit he's lighting it up I lit it up uh, before too. In the house? Yeah. It's You're out. savage, dude. True pothead vibes. Yeah. It's a nice just blaze setup too. You'd be is that just weed or is there other stuff in there? Like what? Dust? I don't know. I don't know. I'm an amateur. <laughs> I'm an amateur in the field. That's no, why I want to learn. Honestly, it's, uh, I put a little bit of tobacco in here. My mom's You're one of those? Uh, My spliff. mom's going to be mad if she hears about it, but Europe wow. completely fucking. Europe changed you. Yeah, it fucked me up. Really? Wow. So I put a little bit in there. Yeah. You're Sigmund now. You're Sigmund smoke, Freud, dude. I, don't, I, I, I never smoke cigarettes, and yet I'm putting fucking this shit. I hate this thing. You love them. I know. <laughs> what, what, I what flavor is that? Yeah. Uh, pink pink mangoes, lemonade or something? Mango sunrise? Strawberry watermelon. Oh. Brutal, dude. Pretty reasonable. Yeah. That's right. You, that's, you know, hard men... Like strawberry watermelon too, you know? <laughs> if you want yeah. to be honest, like a week ago and prior Strong to that man. for like months, I was on one that was called Cuban Cigar. <laughs> and it was so fucking gross. But for some Wait. reason, I liked it, dude. And then... You loved it. I went to go get another one. And the, like, the guy said it was the same. And then when I started smoking, I was like, what the fuck? And I looked at the flavor and it said coffee tobacco. And I was like, ew, bro. Like, <laughs> what the Fuck. That's like, cigars disgusting. are impressive, honestly, because it's like it's pretty impressive that some scientists somewhere like perfectly replicated the smell of poop and people <laughs> just like people just suck on it all day. I think cigars <laughs> smell great. I fucking well, hate you cigars. love poop. I don't I don't and catch I hate, a poop on it. You're a I scat hate, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. I hate cigarettes too. Yeah, oh, they're I the really worst, do. dude. I but they look it. Badass. Oh, I yeah, know you awesome. say that, but it, they're just such a deal breaker for me. If I catch if I catch a whiff of cigarette on someone, it's like an immediate like. Like I, I just I, mean I'm looking at a cool guy in a leather jacket ripping a cig. I'm I'm like I want to interview him. You know? mm. Mm. <laughs> You're in so love, Michael. With if you could rip a cig real quick. <laughs> <Yeah. for me. laughs> I mean, Let's I'll smoke a cigarette skip. every once in a while. Honestly, it's bad. Like when you've been drinking? Oh no, you don't drink. No, I don't drink anymore. That's honestly, nice. yeah, these these came in after I stopped drinking, so it probably has something to fucking do with it. You needed a vice. Yeah, yeah some sort vice of city baby. Fucked up. So yeah, vice. where does where does Lumpy? Uh, yeah, like, so Lumpy. How does he come uh, into the picture? I mean, I've known Lumpy for like a pretty long time. 
uh, when like we played shows together when I was in Stand Your Ground. I couldn't try to think of the band that he was uh, probably Brooksite. I think it was called hard ass band. Honestly, really? Brooksite, dude. Yeah, Brooksite. Um, it's a gadget store in the mall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love but the, it. But the online, the, the so, store, it's the Brooks. Right. So like, yeah, we used to play a lot of shows. He would just beat fucking ass when we were younger with no regard. Yeah. You know, like he didn't give a fuck how old anyone was. Like he would just beat ass. So <laughs> I would always just stay away from him in the pit. And like, he was always <laughs> funny. So we were always, we were always pretty tight uh, meeting up at shows. And then as we got older, he was in King nine, obviously. And mm-hmm. Um, always, always stuck around fucking, I don't even know, man. I just knew that he would like the style of the music when I recorded it. That's why I sent it to him. And know? days was already a thing or was it just his no, CD like he, archive he was at the posting time? Like, yeah, he was just posting like videos on there of like old school shit. I think yeah. he put, I think he put Queensway out on vinyl. Yeah. And that was okay. one, that was the first thing that he did. And like, and when I hit him up, it wasn't with the intentions of him, like really, putting it out because he wasn't really doing that like he kind of i think he just did the queensway thing as like a something to do and then uh yeah like i said he was hitting me up uh he hit me up about it like a month after i originally sent it to him he was like oh you're gonna like do something with this or like you should sing on it blah blah blah. and um he's your fucking he produced the band he's the manager he he hyped me up on it too because i wasn't like i didn't see the bigger he was like, dude, this could be like the biggest fucking, you know, like, <laughs> you know, but. And then you did, you, t- you fucking co-headlined every American festival with seven songs out. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking awesome. So thank yeah, you he, Lumpy for, for seeing the vision there. Lumpy yeah. is very, very smart. Like in a wrestler, wrestling term smart. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. He's very but, like, yeah. he'll I pull up to be, the gig and flip flops yeah. and like say the most surprised. the wisest. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he was the reason why we did the two headliners. Like he might have been like mm. the one that was like, "Nah, you should just headline this shit." Like I Yo, think, honestly, you know, yeah, <laughs> wow. like because I, I feel like Billy Club was on the first day, and I was like, "Yo, Billy Club's gonna headline." And he was like, "Dude, honestly, like I feel like he was the one that was like, honestly, you should just fucking, you could just do it, you know." So. It's such a cool idea, yeah, and it it awesome. show, like that is the bands underneath you. Like nurturing Michael, the guy they've watched grow up, and yeah. being like, Michael's fucking band is going to do this, and we're going to help him do it. Yeah. yeah, it's fucking awesome. And that doesn't happen without the ten plus years of grinding done before in other bands, and as right. just they see the guy they've seen in the pit their whole life, uh, telling them like, "Hey, this is I'm doing this now, so yeah. help me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go, "Okay, <laughs> that's hardcore." Yeah, yeah, dude. That's fucking why we're ass. here. Pass yeah. the torch. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. I love a torch. Let me ask you an important question, Michael. All right, let's hear it. How many McNuggets do you think you could eat in one <laughs> sitting? Dude, honestly, <laughs> I don't really love McDonald's. I need the conversation here to come up. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> this has been <laughs> great. <laughs> no, um, I mean, I've had my years of eating McDonald's. I, I stopped kind of recently, like, you know, after I stopped. Yeah, but let me, let me tell you something. It's crazy that you guys don't drink, but you eat McDonald's, honestly. Because the second I stopped yeah. drinking, I was like, dude, I can't believe I was eating this. Like, it's No, no. <laughs> You're going to the wrong locations is what it is. That's no, operator you, you gotta, error. That's what you got to bring my that order, shit back right was, now. Go. My order was two McDoubles with Mac sauce on it. Um, And I would Beautiful. get a McChicken. And sometimes I'd like get an extra McDouble and smash them together, make one of the McKinney yeah. things. That's yeah. a good order. And I could smash a 20 piece. I've done it. So yeah, I'd for say sure. Probably the most I could eat until I start throwing up, probably like 40. Yeah. See, re- a sad. reasonable man. Sad. All right. <laughs> sad. I'm sad. I'm sad. You're sad. You know, you're, you, you, could, you could do better, I think. I could eat. 20 gordita crunches from Taco Bell. See, that's that's about 100 nuggets right there. Yeah. yeah so, cheesy gonna, gordita crunch? That's a heavy item. That is Dude, a heavy item. It's so that's two good, shells. Though. I know. It's so, so good. So Taco Bell, that's your that's your, uh, that's your advice? That's yeah, the that's one? my go-to. Is that the one? Never, that one's stuck around, so. Hmm. Are any, there any, any vegans uh, in Pain of Truth? Or vegetarians? No. no. Are there any uh, fast food spots that you veto that you just won't do? 
Cause like, like you said, you stopped eating McDonald's, but it's not like if that's the only thing open, you would eat. No, nah, yeah. Like when we were in Europe, we were eating yeah. McDonald's and shit. Cause that's the only fucking thing open. Yeah. You yeah, have yeah, to. Yeah. But like when I, when I get home, I, I really don't. I yeah. haven't been there since, but, um, I don't know. I get, oh, Whataburger fucking sucks. <laughs> the south right? they're coming for you now like, buddy. it's mid like, i mean it's it's a mid-tier fast food burger 100 percent. it's yeah. not better than yeah. wendy's it has no business being in the conversation as uh, yeah i could talk about this all <laughs> fucking day man michael you've opened it's, a real can of worms it's so here. funny that you guys love fast food so much it's awesome How, let me ask well, you this I mean, michael this is a very important question yeah <laughs> <laughs> how many mcnuggets do you think i could eat in one sitting <laughs> I guess, I guess, like, <laughs> if you, you brought up 100. No, 200. He thinks he could do 200. It's seven and a half pounds of food. Easy. That's so crazy. It, Easy. Yeah, it's crazy in, in, like, saying I can fly when I want to because it's you, just not possible. What, what if you die from the experience of trying to reach that goal? Can happen. Then it, wouldn't, then it wasn't easy, but I did it, you know? No. <laughs> It'd be a crazy way to go out. That's how that works. Well, because so in, in Cool Hand Luke, he eats 50 eggs, right? 50 hard boiled eggs. Sure. And then there's an infamous story about how Marlon Brando was like a crazy eater amongst yeah. many other vices. But he was like, he had a crazy appetite. And at like an Oscars party or something, challenged uh, Paul Newman, right? Who wouldn't do it. Or is this, yeah, Paul Newman, wh who wouldn't do it, he called 51. him a coward and he ate 51. I just brought it up to see if you believe. That was just a test to see if you believed in me. And you, you said, said two hundred, right? Yeah, yeah. I believe in you. I just okay. It's a lot. Yeah, you know, two, it's two hundred fifty. So that's five and a half pounds. Okay. What, what was the most you ever eaten so far? In one sitting? Yeah. Like eighty. But that's not true because you said it, they were hours apart. to my dog's head, which is the other part of this scenario. <laughs> it was also hours apart. What is the no. most you've ever eaten? No, the, uh, recently, after that, I did 80. That's hilarious. You did 80, okay. For recreation, without a gun to my dog's head. <laughs> you factor in the gun, I'm going 800. The first time I ever ate Chipotle, for some uh -huh. reason, the very first time, I had three tacos and a burrito. You just couldn't believe it? And I could, there's no way I could do that again. Now I, I can barely finish a burrito from there. You love Chipotle, Michael? Nah. My man. Yeah. What do you eat at home? Pizza? You want, you want to know why I hate Chipotle the most? Absolutely. Why? E. coli. I got to throw respect on this place, too, anyway. So, um, Ruby Soho? Me, no, no. I mean, that place <laughs> is awesome, too. But <laughs> no, me, me and all my brothers worked at this Chinese food spot down the block from my house as busboys, like one by one. Like Eddie worked there as a busboy, Christopher worked there as a busboy, Danny so worked good. there as a busboy, and then I worked there as a busboy. And there was always a Smith. Dude, bomb ass Chinese food. Like, ask Scanlon. Like, Scanlon knew about it. Like, people, people caught on. And then, I don't know what they had going on. It was a, it was kind of sketchy. Like, however, they were open. Like, I don't, I don't really know what was exactly good with it. But they closed down like super out of nowhere. Mm. And then a fucking Chipotle bought it and like didn't even keep the building. Like, the building it was in it was so fucking dope. And they just fucking cleared out. And the next day, there it felt like there was just like a fucking Chipotle there. It was that just sealed so the it's deal. Personal. I, I already, I already hated it. I already hated it. But one, I had to bring up Tangs because it's legendary. <laughs> yeah. And two, fuck Chipotle. Place. So it's on site with Chipotle, is what you're it's saying. On site with Chipotle. So that's the answer then. That's the one you would veto. Oh, uh, yo, honestly, yes. Except In for the when they were giving everyone free food. They remember that, was that time dope. period. Yeah, like you so just a magical time. Just like you just pick the, the the guy in the band that could like speak the best. Which was it was that. always Hello, it, I'm uh, obviously Dave never me. But Jim. Jim, it was yeah. me. It was me. It was you? Yeah, because yeah. I always had I had fucking telemarketing jobs, so I was always uh, on the phone. I had yeah. I had a voice. Har Harold from Coyo would would do it for Hangman. He would always wow. be the one. He'd like get like ready for it and be like, "All right, I'm going to call." <laughs> I represent hey, yeah, everybody. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly like that. Yeah. When you said Hangman, were they ever like, "Oh, oh, you"? We would lie. <laughs> yeah, we would lie know. about our name. Oh, okay. We were never harm's way. Yeah, we were we were a throwdown, and <laughs> occasionally it bites you in the ass, and a guy goes, "I ain't seen y'all in a while, man. Y'all look different." Man. <laughs> You go, yeah. Remember, <laughs> lineup changes, you know? Uh, 
You know how it is. <laughs> you ever, uh, you ever, Long Island's a kind of a spooky place historically, Michael. Yeah, a little bit. Right? Y'all got Amityville there. That's a, that's one. Yeah. Amityville. I was, yeah. I was listing off ones earlier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a town. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you ever <laughs> see a ghost? Ooh, I feel something coming. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. I don't want to. It's easy. <laughs> may, may, uh, maybe. I, That's a good answer. That's a fair answer, I, I, I think. I don't completely believe in like visual ghosts. Like, but you've seen something you can't explain. Uh, yes. I Yeah. You know, whether it was real or if I was just like turning my head too quick and saw something. <laughs> I don't fucking know. But sure. Can, let me, let me hear to share. Oh, you want to hear the story? I want to hear about it. Um, it's almost October, man. Yeah, we get, we're gearing up, dude. If you if you want me to be honest, I don't know if it was my vertigo because I have pretty bad vertigo. It wasn't your vertigo, goes, but <laughs> couldn't have it, possibly it, been this, your ha- vertigo. this happened like literally like it could have been this morning or yesterday, and I was washing my hands in the sink, and it looked like there was a bunch of like gray hair like floating like to my right. And this is like during the day. It wasn't at night or something where it was like pitch black. Like it was like during the day. And like it was just like a fucking ball of floating gray hair, it seemed. Mm -hmm. And it was like spread apart, like pretty long. Mm -hmm. And I quick turned and obviously it wasn't there, but I felt weird after it. Mm. And you had the the CBGBs? Yeah. And like, um, I don't, the the house that I'm in like is like it was a, like there was weird people there before, so like I don't uh, know exactly what they're into. Um, so it's yeah. like Ju- what what's that? The Grudge, Juan, the fucking yeah, you know. Yeah. This is the first time somebody's had a story about where the person wasn't tired. That's what well, what so a, a common thread amongst all ghost stories that that we've ever come across. As a matter of fact, someone who I talked about this to a couple days ago, it was it was a nighttime thing. It's like when they it's, wake up or something. It's always around sleep, and it's like, yo, when when we're falling asleep, you think of crazy shit every yeah, single yeah. night. That happens sure. all the time. So or, it, or our mind you're getting, is open to the rest of the world. Yeah, right? dude. The, the I mean, you're on um, my. That's my shit. I you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, look. Yeah. It's like I said. It's like I said. There's. Wi-Fi around us all Dude. the time. No, Radio no, waves. No, no. All kind. no, no, no. What I'm saying is we don't know how to perceive it yet. So maybe there's. No, I know how to perceive it. It's Wi-Fi. That's no. how we make this happen. No, no. The hair, gray weird. hair. That's something else. <laughs> oh yeah, that was weird. Wait, were you on the dream thing before though? Like, like saying like different, like dimensions and shit. Is that where you? Oh, that's and shit? that's a whole other conversation, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are dreams? Huh? Dude, what well, are they? I, I was just gonna say. They're gonna kill me if I say this on on, on the recording. No, I'm fucking them. Like, I'm a, yeah them. No, but <laughs> like it's crazy to me. I, I just can't believe that. Like, think about how crazy dreams are. They happen. Yeah, yeah. Roughly, like you could say every night for some people. Yeah, yeah. Happens, I've been dreaming. Happens all the time. Happens to some people every day. Some other people every once in a while still have oh reoccurring serious shit happening in there. Yeah, and then like. They just tell you, yeah, you're just dreaming. Like it's just dreaming. It's like in the dream. No, I'm just saying. No, in general, just like just call yeah, it yeah. dreaming. Like it, they're they're fucking making it lighter than what it oh, is. Oh, them, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, for them, sure, they'd be bro. doing that, dude. <laughs> you know I I've been having really. I take this supplement, the one I gave you in in England, Colin, where you, when you did sleep a ton, I that, ZM, good, that, that ZMA shit, it gives you really really crazy dreams. It? ZMA, it's zinc, magnesium, and something that starts with an A. I don't think you need that, Bo. No, I definitely don't, but I do take it anyway. Why did it make you um, knock out? Colin? No, yeah, he just, sleeps for th- twenty three hours a day. It makes you. It makes you, you sleep. Pass out when you took it. No, so what it does is when you fall asleep, it keeps you asleep. Oh. It doesn't hit like a Benadryl or something. But yeah. once it took you do, me, I still fell asleep at like four a.m. UK time, but I woke up at like noon. noon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But this is poignant for for the date that we're recording this. The most recent intense dream I had. 
I was on a plane as it crashed into the World Trade Center. Oh, shit. What the fuck, dude? It was so, it was so intense that I woke myself up by yelping. I was like, ah! And I woke yeah, up I've in my bed. Before. That's crazy, dude. Fucking so intense. I remember literally forget. like, buckle up! Like people screaming. And it was like, holy shit. Yeah. That so, brings yeah. up a good uh, a good question for my Yeah, where were you? <laughs> yeah. Where were you on September 11th? Um, I was in my, I think I was in second grade. I was in my, in class. You were yeah. right there. Yeah, I was fucking close, dude. I I brought someone home, uh, with me. Like one of my childhood friends, like came back with me because his dad was NYPD. Oh Holy shit. shit! Yeah, yeah. So and he was freaking out. You know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, yeah. we were young, but I think if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure my my mom just told me exactly what was happening immediately. Wow. Yeah. Kind of I was in I was in no, eighth no grade kind of lady. She, I think she yeah. was just like, "Yo, this is fucked up." Like, and she couldn't call my she couldn't call my dad. I don't think, and like he does work in the city all the time. She didn't know what the mm. fuck he was. So, I remember it being like pretty crazy. I mean, obviously, you know what I mean, like, yeah. uh, but even being young and like, I grasp hundred percent didn't grasp fully, but I did understand like it, that. It Who was, told you? Your mom told you. Mm, yeah. We were in class. I'm on the same time zone as you. Yes. I remember yeah. being in school. Oh, so yeah, was yeah. I at this so time. Was I. Yeah, yeah. I was in school, and yeah, they sat us. We like all had to get back in our seats. And from what I remember, my teacher said that some of us were probably going to be going home, and that there was like yeah. an emergency. But anyone who's staying, it's not a big deal. Whatever. Blah blah blah. Um, but yeah, I remember going to my house, and the TV was on. Like, dude. You know. That TV, CNN was on in my house for fucking four weeks. weeks. Yeah, dude. Nonstop. Yeah, it was fucked up. I mean, I was in, uh, I was in Miss Cresho's eighth grade English class and they put it on the, the fucking TV. Damn, you're And old we hell. saw the second plane hit and then the fuck off. And then the towers fall. Right. Watched it happen. I remember when that English class let out, none, none of us went home or anything. In the changing period in the hallway, I screamed at the top of my lungs, we're all going to die. Because I didn't oh realize God. what was happening. Like you said, I didn't really. Yeah. It was just like, oh, a build, like surely everyone was out of the building if they knew if it was, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't, I didn't know. Were you joking? Of course. Oh, okay. I thought Everyone was like screaming But you were shit. scared of like Blair Witch and stuff. I figured maybe you were like, oh my God. The, I, this was, uh, this was too abstract. And it wasn't okay. until I got home. I live, I grew up not too far from O'Hare and there were no airplanes oh. in the sky and that was weird. Yeah. And then we have the second, we have the tallest building in the yeah. city or in the country at that point. That's what Chicago. I remember the fear being based around. Yes. It's like, who's next? Yeah, who's next? Sure. Exactly. And it was fucking, that was scary. I remember that was like, oh, this can happen. This is a thing now that can I mean, it was happen. fucked up for us too. I remember like, because uh, we we're just on an island and like if you wanted to get off the island you pretty much had to pass the twin town like you like if right. you were going yeah to the right city, yeah like you usually see the twin towers if you're driving past the city so like and just the fact that like the island's not meant it wasn't built for as many people that are like actually here now so and even then so like if something bad happens like in general and people have to leave, like it's, it would be fucked. Like, and it was fucked that day. Like just trying oh, to traffic dude. and just trying to like a long Island like, has travel. the worst traffic I've Some ever been yeah, on. Yeah. It's the roads aren't designed for as many people as like that are here, you know, like yeah, they were built so long ago, even like a lot of the parkways and shit, like they're just like the off ramps and shit are like, they feel like they're like five feet long. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. It's just not you can't take a trailer. And on you them. can't drive a van on them for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like Christ. Certain ones you can't. Yeah. It's fucking brutal. brutal. Well, you know, it's, your, it's because the fucking bridges they built that long ago. I'm pretty sure a lot of it is because it's some of the overpasses are so low. Like it would just take the top off. It happens. Yeah, oh, okay. you'll, like you'll be driving, like see like a fucking tractor trailer with like the top of it clean off because it tried to go on a parkway and like try to go into the Jesus Christ. Thing. So that's why you guys but. remember flying at all before what? September 11th. You're what? younger. So I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. know if you no, remember I do. flying. I do. I do remember like how different it was. It was so oh, easy. Dude, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, 
Yeah, I, back then, I mean, before that, I would have never even, I thought flying was fucking dope. I loved, like, going to Florida and seeing my grandparents and shit. Mm. Like, wouldn't even think twice about getting on an airplane, you know what I mean? Mm-mm. But Mm-mm. after that, I mean, it was just, like, that's just the world that we grew up in after that. Yeah. You know I mean, there was, yeah. like, uh, there's literally, like, a hard line change, like, after that day. Like, Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just embedded I, in everyone's Worldwide, brain. really. You know Dude, I mean? it's a joke in the office, but like our whole generation had to process this. Like, oh yeah, dude, it's thing. Fucked. And like you know, no matter what age you were, like there's like really bad parts of it. Being young, like that young, and being exposed to that is pro- yeah. probably crazy. Being an eighth grader and being exposed yeah. to that is, is crazy. And then the crazy shit, dude. Right? I mean, and, we we talked about this another time, but then when when we invaded F. Afghanistan. That was the same year I had to sign up for the draft. So oh, that's sure. like that's, that's lingering on my mind too. Where it's like, if this gets out of control, I'm going to war. <laughs> like it was like it was yeah. very intense, yeah. and it all started with this shit. It was fucking wild. Yeah, yeah, dude. Wild. In New York, I imagine it. I was only two hours from New York, but I wasn't I wasn't there. The way that it united people was uh, was a crazy thing to remember. Yeah. Dude, Fuck yeah, it's the flags on cars. Too, like you fucking roll around New York now. I mean, it's like it's so fucking di- like people like yeah, like people treat each other like shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like people really fucking I mean, that's everywhere. That's yeah. fucking everywhere. And then something like that, it takes something like that to like Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is fucked, but that's just Yeah, it is. Fucking, that's just the way shit is. Dude, I mean, dude, the, the, the fucking you the flags, I mean? flags on cars. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah my dad crazy. had them. <laughs> like everybody had them, yeah, you know, like yeah. it was fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah, um, crazy. Let's go back to pain of truth a little bit. That's enough. 9-11. Enough today, 9/11. I think. Who was the first feature that you asked? Uh, Martin from Billy Club, actually. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. It was, yeah. I asked him and then he did that track and then Josh likes question was just like at my house during covid he like just drove from philly even though we all thought we were gonna die <laughs> we were just like joking about it too we we're just like this is crazy like, like we just didn't know how serious it was yet but we were just had like, no idea yeah, yeah we he, halted the god's hate record completely yeah, yeah but he just like drove up from philly anyway and just like hung out with us all summer and we just woke up and i was finishing recording it and i was like oh you want to come with me and he was like so hung over and he was like yeah and i was like yeah do this fucking part really quick and see if it sounds good so then that was two out of four songs. And I don't right. know if I just have like, is it OCD, right? Like yeah. Like yeah. Looking at the songs and it just being like, not just one, now it's like two. For some yeah. reason in my head, I was like, I can't not, I have to get. Got to do them all. I got to just do them all. And Celia was actually the last one to do it, I think. Mm. But yeah. I really well, like. It Martin. I like the I like Steve's the two hundred stab wounds one on the new one. Fuck yeah! I think that oh, part yeah. is awesome, and I think I want to talk to you about the the TUI the justice one mm-hmm. because there's a lot going on with that. He put yeah. his whole ass into that one. Yeah, there's like layers. There, what's like there's like a, a talking part. Yeah, dude. I mean, yeah. I it's crazy <laughs> because when I wrote when when I wrote the lyrics for it and like first heard it all laid out. Um, I was like, yo, like it sounded good with me on it. Like it sounded cool, but I just could not stop hearing justice's voice. Like when I'd mm-hmm. hear it, I was just like, yo, him on it would just, it just sounded like, like a lost TUI track or something. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and I uh, just, I, the way he sings and shit, I was like, yo, with, with his voice on there, it just sounds so fucking perfect. And he really did the, like the TUI voice. Yeah. yeah, for yeah, it, yeah which is yeah, cool. Yeah. He did. He fucking brought it back and he sound, but he sounds like, old, like a little bit older and it's cool. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. hundred um, percent. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's funny that it's like mostly kind of a positive song, you know, a little bit in a way that's like, Hey man, oh uh, yeah, come on. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Come on. I, and then it goes pit to pit at the end. Yeah. Violently, yeah, yeah, yeah. Abruptly. Violently. Yeah, Love I mean, that. I wrote that shit about fucking just like losing classic, like losing people over drugs and shit, and just seeing people fucking get into that shit. But there is like positive side to it. 
there is because it's like, hey man, yeah, I'll, I'll help you. Just yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. That's exactly. Let's right. go from the top. Let's let's look at this track list here. Lifeless yeah. on the ground with uh, with Anthony. Yeah, and John too. And John, and John. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you were opening with this one for a while before the record came out. Yeah, that was one that I wrote. Um, I wrote that in the no blame just facts like error. Uh, mm. Like I was that was contender for the first track on that. So it was either the test or lifeless. You held off for the LP, wow. but I've been wow. there. Yeah. I don't know. I'm happy that I ended up putting the test out first, I think. A hundred percent. And I think yeah. this is a perfect like LP opening track. Yeah, it yeah. has a big intro that really feels like yeah. the pain I, of truth intro. Honestly, Lumpy didn't want that to be the intro. He wanted this falls on you to be the intro. And I was just telling I was just telling him I was just like that is a good intro too, but I just I couldn't picture this song in the middle. I was like, it doesn't yeah. make any sense ah. to me. Like just, there is a certain thing with writing that's kind of like it's first or it's out. Yeah, it, it you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, yeah. I'm not very like musically inclined in some like, but when I like hear some, when I have it pictured in my head a certain way, it's like, dude, some you things I'll budge on, some things I'll budge on and be like, oh, that you know, like it's good to have another set of eyes on it. But that I was like, nah, it's gonna be the first track. It's got to be track. Like, yeah, love it. And if you know, it's worthy of an opening track. It has the cool, the big fucking on the ground mosh call is badass. Yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, track two, in your heart, with Scott Vogel. Yeah, Whew. that's a good. That's a big acquisition. He's that's he a, might be the guest spot king. Yeah, yeah. in all of hardcore. Yeah, yeah and yeah, also yeah. kind of the the trailblazers with that because like live they would always have, have people, people their doing their merch parts, guy you know? sang like the did like the coolest guest spot whoever yeah. it was you know? yeah. So that's kind of a cool full full circle thing. Yeah, for sure. Tell me about that. Tell me a little bit about that song. Putting that together, getting Scott. Um, that was I just quit a job that was just, I was like selling. I'm not gonna say what it was because I don't want them to fucking hear it. But still, like, no people there. But I was yeah. I left and like they were just fucking bullshitting me, and I just knew it. So it was like a mixture of that and also like seeing through people in the scene too um mm. so it was like a combination of both things like coming into my head as i was writing it but it, it is like a hard like mainly about just like whether or not fucking hardcore like what like when you're into that shit like you know from day one like the second it's introduced to you it clicks right away it's not rare i don't think it's super rare no, no. Oh, and it when you meet somebody you know if they're if, if they're, yeah if it's yeah, actually sure. in their heart so yeah, oh. so like that's that's what it ended up. I I did start the song by, uh, with the idea of it like being about like the shitty job that I was at, um, and about like them just trying to like teaching me a sales pitch, and then bullshitting me and changing the words around and like the subject matter. But pretty much it's the same pitch that they're trying to sell me to get me to do some shit for them. Uh, and I'm uh. like, dude, you just taught me this pitch, fucking. 15 minutes, no, not 15 minutes ago. But you just yeah. taught me this fucking two months ago. Yeah. Like you're using the same wording on me in the same like give and take, whatever the fuck it is. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't need that shit. And, and who better than to talk about what what's in somebody's heart than Scott? You know? Yeah. Dude, are you kidding me? That's <laughs> like, yeah, that was another piece of it too. I was trying to think of like that one. He, me and him talked about him being on a track. Um, prior so like when that when i heard that song i was like ah oh, this just sounds like a, like one Scott. With the, like one with the underdog song or something you know like yeah, okay. for vogel um and yeah i think i kind of like started gearing it more towards like the hardcore like halfway through the song because gotcha that's when i realized scott was probably gonna be on that track and i was like i, uh, I don't want to like make a song about my shitty job like <laughs> You know what I mean? It, like you could listen to it and put it to that. If that's you can what adapt you that to any, anybody yeah. has that experience. Yeah, you exactly. Absolutely. But, so like the song could really like be put to anything that you got going on. But I did base it around hardcore by the end of it. You know, of course. Yeah. Love and then yeah. acting, acting up. up. We've talked about. Um, was yeah. this the first uh, single? Yeah, acting up was the first one. How what? Uh, I, what's now listening to it with Stab Wounds Man? Over that part sounds like 
I can't picture anybody else there now just because of the vibe. The kind of yeah. like one syllable per kick drum type er, 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 er. death yeah. metal performance. Perfect mixture. What made you want to get him on there? Um, me and to him. To bless him with this moment. Yeah, yeah. Me, like us and them kind of, I, I want to say they came out either during the pandemic or maybe right before. But I know they started playing shows like I think during the pandemic. I remember seeing a video and I was like, dude, like. I just thought they were sick right off the bat. And I thought it was cool that they were playing a show. And I think I might have hit them up like early on and just like threw respect on them. I was like, yeah, oh, shit is dope. Like respect for just fucking going and playing a show. Like that's, that's awesome. awesome. And then they came down to play our first show. So and then oh. anytime that we roll through, I think it's Pittsburgh. Anytime we're in Pittsburgh. They have like they're there, so they must live. But I don't really know exactly. Where. They're in Ohio. Ohio, so. Ohio yeah. yeah. So anytime we like play Pittsburgh, like they roll out, um, and we just have a cool relationship, you know, like two different styles Sick. of music. But like, I know they're genuinely hardcore kids. Yeah, yeah. And there's certain bands like that 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 click with me too. So like, that's just like yeah. Of, I mean that like, song fucking rocks. That was yeah. a, an amazing yeah. first single. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Um. Yeah, and it, I feel like it just like had the vibe too. Like when I first uh, sang the the chorus or the verse or whatever it is, this look motherfucker part. Um, I wanted like yeah, like I wanted myself to sound like the way he did for it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like that's usually how it comes about. And I think I'm like, oh, I wish I sounded like that. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah. I don't know how to fucking. I just don't sound like that. So yeah, just to see if he's down to fucking do it. You know. Originally, awesome. he sang like a little bit of the first, like the first time it comes in. Like I had mm. him in there a little bit, but we ended up taking it out. Everyone, I, I think want, it's I perfect want, as like the, the yeah. build to it. All right, yeah, yeah, fair enough. That's what everyone. I else, like that. Yeah, that's what everyone else. That's what everyone. That's what Lumpy was said. That's what Lumpy was saying too. You yeah. got to earn it. You earn yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a little taste, though. It was yeah. just a little taste in the beginning. That's what that was. That's where I was coming from. I was but like, now oh. it's now it's the big moment. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Rather yeah. than like, oh, he's coming. Yeah. It's like, oh, he came. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, you and me, Pain of Truth and Madball. Wow. That's your favorite. Filled. You said it's your favorite. You hate all the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly. Well, you asked what, what my favorite like guest spot was, and it's just the fact that yeah. it's the coolest one. Like, of yeah, course, like all of these people well, would say it's but the then coolest you got one. Vogel you know? too, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Vogel no, this is it's but, an achievement as a New York thing. It's like a, yeah, just a, yeah. it's a poetic. But Scott would say yeah. Freddie was the, like, is the dude, coolest one. I was gonna bring it up before. There was a while where, like, when I was young and Madball playing, and then I'd see him after or something, you know, I'd be like, oh, it's like let's say what's up, We're real quick, say like good set or something, you know? Yeah. And I walk up, and they didn't care like I was little or or nothing. Like he. Two or three guys like, whoa, 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 like, no, he's not like talking to people right now. You know, like <laughs> he just played, you know what I mean? Kind of made sense. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, shit. So that it was like that. I never really, never really like talked to him much, you know? And then um, played the Thompson or we, we I went to the Thompson Park uh, show that was like yeah. during COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like we had, we had a little moment there. Um after I moshed on the stage and he is that we, we talked, like we talked a little bit after that set. And I think that's when he found out that, uh, I was like, Oh, you know, my brother, Chris, like you guys went to Europe together. He was like, Oh dude. And the other one too. Right. And I was like, yeah. So he remembered Chris and Danny. He got it. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, we just like kind of started going back and forth. He, he learned more like once pain truth was like playing more shows and shit. I think he like caught wind of it. And, uh, then that's why we started. He he hit me up about shows, like playing shows together, and um, that's it. Just like was organic, you know. That's it was it was sick because it just came kind of full circle. Beautiful, by the end of it. hardcore. Yeah, mm. best thing ever. Yeah. This falls on you with with Shane Moran. Yeah, that seed back from the dead, dude. He brought him back yeah. to yeah, life. Dude. I know it's awesome. Tell um, me about he, that. Dude, I just thought the song, I wrote that track too on guitar. That was one of my songs too. Um, and like right off the bat, right when I was writing it, like with the drums I had pictured in my head, I was just picturing like that, like, I think it's Justice Deserved, like the Bad C track with like all the toms in the intro. The get, 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 
Is that Justin Caesar? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Justin. I was just picturing like the beginning having like crazy rolled out like toms or something. And I was like, mm-hmm. I was, the way I pictured in my head, I was like, I was kind of sound like bad seed track, like similar vibe. So that's why I was, and then, <laughs> well, yeah, it was, it was fucking <laughs> awesome. and me and him, like when I was super young, they played Long Island. They were like, I could not believe bad seed when I was like, 15. they were amazing. I was, yeah. yeah. Like, they, yeah. The name, the logo, the fact they were in title fight, but they were playing these hard ass songs. Yeah. Like the whole thing to me, I was just like, whoa, like that's so, that's me. Like I love like soft shit like that, but then I like playing hard music, like, you know? Yeah. And uh, I just thought that was so fucking sick. So, and he, you know, we met when I was a, a young ass kid and he's kind of like, he, he was at a hangman show in Wilkes-Barre, like small ass show. We I chopped it up there a little bit, um, and we always just uh, kind of kept in touch. Like, and uh, I sent him the track, and he was like, "Dude, like, honestly, I'm super." He was super psyched and grateful to be a part of it. Honestly, he was like, awesome. yeah, like I, I love paying truth. Honestly, and uh, I've been, you know, trying to kind of get back in, into it, uh, and you know, he did, he appreciated me thinking about him. He was like, I I was surprised. He was like, no one's ever asked me. And I was like. <laughs> Pretty fucking. I'm happy I did. That's fucking. Yeah, awesome. nobody asking him is crazy because yeah, yeah. the mark that Bad Seed made in such a short span of time was yeah. was pretty massive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he so, sounds totally different too. It's crazy. He does sound different. Yeah, he was a wee lad in Bad Seed. Yeah, you know? yeah. Lad yeah. Seed. Yeah, yeah. They're all young, right? <laughs> They're all yeah. Uh, yep. Michael's headphones just died, so he's gonna sound a little different. But you're gonna bear with us. It's gonna be fine. Yeah, it, not too much longer. Too late featuring Justice Trapped in Your Ice. Yep, yep. This was a ridge track. Pit to pit to pit at the end. Beautiful. Um Let me let me pit. ask you, Michael, uh when it came to Justice doing what he does on the track, did you just let him kind of run with it? Um, I mean I had... it's it's very, you know, it's very TUI. It's yeah. like very much his style. I had the, uh, all, he used all the same lyrics. I think we might have changed up, like, he might have changed a couple of them up, like one or two, but I really didn't give him too much. He's, I think, like, there was actually a lot of, I'm the worst dude with like texting, as you can imagine. I'm like the mm-hmm. worst with like shit like that. So I think he, like, it might have been, there was a point where he was like, dude, I have no idea what you want me to do. Yeah. I sent him like timestamps <laughs> and shit, like in my own way. And he was probably like, dude, yeah. what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? But <laughs> so I, I don't even, th- I really don't think I explained it that, that well. And I like what I wanted, but honestly, I think the way I pictured it is like the way it came out. And, like, mm-hmm. I think he knew, He's a pretty talented dude. I feel like he knew he like, big time. He knew what, what was what was good and like what he was gonna be doing, you know? Yeah. So when we did like, the one with me on it, you were very much like, here's my idea, but do your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has that kind of what the way it was yeah. with, with everybody? Yeah, yeah. I do that with, like, you know, I don't want to ask someone to do it and then be like, you have to sing my shit. You know, if someone's like, yeah, I don't want to change this. I'm like, all right, do it up. I mean, if it sounds bad or like, if like everybody's like, ah, oh, I like it the other way better mm. then maybe we would change it or something. But sure. For the most part, I let everyone. Everybody killed it. Yeah. yeah and per- sure. picking at scraps in particular with Austin Sparkman and Jay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a heater. To, I'm trying to think how like Austin, I think like, Austin was supposed to do a different song, but I think I sent, I think I sent a file for picking it scraps. I was supposed to send a different one. So like I sent, I sent him like all the lyrics, the same kind of thing. Like uh, I sent him like timestamps and shit. And he was like, bro, these are not matching up at all. I'm so fucking confused. <laughs> I'm pretty sure or something like that. So then he, he just sang like, random parts on picking at scraps and we we're like oh shit like because picking at scraps is very much like yeah long island yeah and <laughs> new york and hudson yeah. valley yeah, yeah. and then yeah. austin's like guys i'm i live in boston i know it's hilarious it's awesome <laughs> it's awesome it's like that's, that's what i'm saying that's like, a people, perfectly some people like just take it so fucking 
serious, you know, like we'd, yeah. or, or maybe not take it serious, but, or think like we're taking it very, like it's sick. Right. I love it. And that's exactly how I want it to It's end perfect. Up. But then you have Austin who is like that's what I'm saying. It's a just, talented musician and, and oh, songwriter. Oh, fuck yeah. That's, 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 yeah. What, makes exactly it, what, that's what makes it even funnier. You know what I mean? It's, it's great. It's, it's like, and it's just dope, dude. Austin's been around for so fucking long. I always looked up to him. 100%. Um, he's a lifer for sure. And so it was like, we could have just took his parts out and just had Jay just do the whole thing. But it was like, no, dude, let's just. No, it's way cooler. Let's yeah, just awesome. fucking leave it. You know what I mean? But, yeah. Because he didn't really do the parts that for that song I would have done the guest spots for. Like he did his own Which, thing. But it's awesome. Yeah. Like, and then. I was like, different it, times gonna... are accentuated, and that's that's like top three tracks for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Um, out of our hands, yes. track eight, featuring the movie Life Man. Yeah, that's baby. a wild one. That's yeah. yeah, dude. I mean, I've had a movie like the movie Life poster in my room for like since I was like five years old. So I fucking, <laughs> to me, that like I, you know, I'm like, there's no difference from like Vinny to like vocal in terms of like my perception of like how they influenced me. You know what I mean? Like Shall even though like it's me? two like different things, like to me, it was always the same shit on Long Island in general. It's like the vibe here is like, everything's <laughs> kind of hardcore. So, right. So Dude, to that me, would, like that I, would... I totally understand why someone would be like, what the fuck? That's so crazy. But like, it really, does he sound like that in the movie life? Dude, he sounds like that. Yes, like live. That's when I realized I was watching I'm the Avalanche and I was like, dude, I love this dude. I've looked up to him for so long. And if you put a hard ass track behind him, it's going to fucking sound dope. Like he's just <laughs> screaming. Yeah, right it now. sounds wild. Yeah, like he's screaming. That's how he screams like live, you know? Like it's, it's, he didn't really do anything like that. I had different. no idea. So huh. it was, that was just like a, a cool. Cool kind of thing. And uh, I might be tripping, but besides Brandon from Incendiary, who's the only other Long Island guy. Uh, oh, which is wow. Like it's, it's funny. It's funny to think you had that poster when you were five and he's singing on your song. By comparison, that would be like me having like Scotty Pippen on a harm. <laughs> <song. laughs> like, like at five, awesome. I had no actually, idea. It's like, it's actually you could like, get it. um, it's an Atticus poster. It has like Blink-182 on it. Yeah. The yeah, movie yeah. Life Bane is on it. Yep. Wow. Uh, American Nightmare. It's like a Right. Like a I life. remember. Which, I remember it. Honestly, like that too. Like that, like I always fucking love that poster because it was like a bunch of bands in one thing. Yeah. Always love that. <laughs> Finally. I literally always love it. <laughs> <laughs> one poster, many bands. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We got to bring one, them back. One, one record, one record, many bands. One record, many bands. <laughs> Woo. We just, that Atticus poster yeah. just unlocked the key to Pain of Truth. That's yes. why you did it. Dude, wow. real recognizes real. Oh my God. That, you know what I mean? Like the idea <laughs> of it, like the song is so sick. Breakdown is so sick. Um, But it's more so like the idea of the track and like, the fact that all those dudes were like, yeah, let's all do this. Like even yeah. that, like that drove, that gave me the idea to do that shit for Pain and Truth. And it was like, all right, let's do that. But just a whole fucking record instead of just one track. That's why we, that's <laughs> what we did for the Valley Beyond. It was just got that, but yeah. Valley guys. Yeah. So that's the coolest. That's yeah. That's tales all the time. It's a yeah. proven formula to be awesome. Yeah. Same old story. <laughs> the only song with no track. Yeah. I mean, it's just no like feature. an instrumental thing. Yeah. It's badass. Yeah. Killer and Nick wrote that. Um, Killa and Nick. Killa and Nick is the drummer. Nick Barker's the oh, drummer. Okay. So, yeah, it's Killa and Nick. Um, Killa Nick and Nick. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, they, uh, I, you got under my skin with jo with old Joby on there. The guest, the other guest spot king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah dude. Always delivers. Yeah, he's um, his voice is obviously super unique, iconic. I always love Criminal Instincts. You know. Um, they're an era defining band for sure oh fuck yeah dude like that era of time is, is so sick you know and um yeah i was psyched he was fucking down to do it too you know what i mean i feel like the style fits like the song pretty well big know? time fuck yeah yeah he was born to sing in a 
at, with a bunch of old guys in New York, you know. Fuck yeah. Big and, the fucking and, cabbie hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got the voice of a band full of guys in the cabbie hat. Fuck yeah. Big old guitars up here. <laughs> but and Artists then also fun. coincidentally the voice of just a, a wonderful country singer. True. You're right. It's not fair. It's, it's not fair. fair. You should only get to have one. It ain't fair. <laughs> Title sure. track, not through blood, featuring Brendan and the the homie from Last Wishes. Yeah. That's a, that's awesome. It's yeah. like you know what the title track that represents our whole band. Let's get a British guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean that was like last minute too. I think I showed him they were here, and I already had like the roughs or something. And I just showed him the whole thing, and he was like, "Dude, this is fucking crazy." And I was like, "Yeah, dude, fuck yeah." And I was thinking, <laughs> I was like, "Be awesome if you were just on it, you know." And we were trying to find <laughs> a spot where he could be, and that bass line part was just like empty. Yeah, ah. I, I wanted to like say something there, but I was like, eh. yeah, that's funny because that part w- within the context of the record, I would have assumed you always had someone talking okay. over that break. Yeah. Yeah. Like in that break. Yeah. I was going to like end up recording something for it, but I didn't really know what to do with it when we were at the studio. So we ended up just leaving it and I was like, oh, we'll just have someone, whoever is on the song. But like Brandon, like. We were trying to talk shit into the mic, and it was we were both just laughing. Me and Brandon from Insignere. Um, you and Brandon from Insignere. What was that? What was that? <laughs> you and you and Brandon. Yeah, from Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just cracking up, like talking shit into the mic, and uh, it was funny, but we couldn't like use half of it. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, and then Corn wanted to do it, and I was like, honestly, you talk shit really well. Exactly. Yeah, he says cunt in like the first yeah. word. That's the yeah, hardest yeah. thing ever. Yeah, I didn't know. If, like he said it to me, I was like, whoa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that means that's a different thing here. Yeah. <laughs> Overall, um, yeah. This is this is like the kind of hardcore that I like. You know. Fuck yeah. Like no, like to a T. This is what this is me. Yeah. As a band, everybody knows that. Yeah. So I'm just glad that people want this and people want to do this. You know, and there's boy, been so many dark they. times, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there were dark times. Melodic and I think we're out times. of times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, you know, younger people, Nick is fucking in his mid-20s and he's, right, and he's writing these riffs. Yeah. So there's going to be more Nicks out there. There's going to be more Michael Smiths out oh, there. For sure. There's, That's what I was saying uh, before. It's not a rare thing, you know? It's a beautiful thing. It's not for us. everyone, but it's not rare, you know? Right. It's, yeah. it's 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 the ratatouille formula again. You know? What's and that? not anyone can cook. Yeah. But a great cook can come from anywhere, you know? Yeah. Hardcore <laughs> is ratatouille at the end of the day, always. Everything is ratatouille. Got you. Every art. Uh not through blood. Twenty twenty three. The hardest record in, in quite some time. Mm. Um I feel like this is a good place to to kind of wind things down. Yeah. You got any any send off, any final any, words? Any, yeah, anything you want to leave the people with today? Uh no, nah, not really. But thanks right. thanks to you guys for <laughs> for uh for having me on here and asking of course. asking about it and talking about it. I appreciate of course. appreciate the love you guys. Yeah. No, it's it's well, well it just deserved, felt, it's earned. Yeah. What it, was that it felt, Sorry. I was gonna say it felt deserved because we did the mini Really early on, those that was like the first of the minis, like when we were doing them. Yeah, yeah those are second sure. trip I think that we ever did. Yeah, it was in yeah, Boston. Yeah, right? and it was in Boston. It was just felt like we didn't really get into enough, you yeah, know. Yeah. So I'm, the, I'm glad. The nutshell glad we got, of Michael. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate you guys. Putting of course. Yeah. You know? I feel like you're retiring my song now, right? So it's gone. No, nah. it's out. No, 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 no. It's no, around. No. Fuck yeah. You got so many songs now. You don't need to play that one anymore. Dude, people love that track, man. Not Why just saying that because we're talking to you. We fuck it on the record. Oh, is it on the is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it hidden? No, but that would have been fucking sick. You told me you were doing that. I that know. didn't happen. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Dude. You were too high. Dude. Yeah. You were smoking the marijuana cigarettes. I you know. forgot to put it on. No, I didn't forget, dude. <laughs> Everyone was just, uh, they were like, yeah, I think it's cool that we have like the demo release, whatever you want to call it, like first EP, a split, 
a comp song. Yeah, like, it is cool. And then now you got you got a bullet in the chamber for LP two. I know? was just gonna say uh, that too. We could, we, like we could always re-record it and just. That's clap. Look at that, dude. Declination is like half demo song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you never know. just do whatever. Mm-hmm. I love that song. I, I was I was no, honored dude, whenever, to be part of it. Whenever we play that song, people fucking like flip the fuck out on it. So yeah, those people, everyone's singing the words and shit to that that one probably. Like second most to like wow. the test and pain truth. Like people, a lot of people sing along to it. I love so, it. And doing that was like, okay, I should start singing again. That's yeah. sick, dude. So you, Fuck yeah. you did that. That's awesome. Dude. How? You let me ask you. Too, so. When Thanks, when man. it comes to the other guest spots that you've had, has anyone done theirs more than Colin has done <laughs> his? I would imagine so. Celia does it. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. Most of the time. That makes sense. There. I got to throw respect on my man, uh, Tyler Anderson from Long Island, because we were playing hockey one day and I showed him Snake in Disguise. It was like, no, I think it was just me on it. And I just had that spot blank. And uh, and he was like, oh, dude, this song's crazy. He's like, dude, you should try to sing there. Like, so like, like, you should, oh, you know, you should try to sing or get someone to sing there. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, it would be cool if someone like sang on it. And First person he said he was like, dude, you should try to get Colin from Twitching Tongues. Or just said it would sound I think he said it would sound sick if Colin from Twitching Tongues did it. And I was like, honestly, we chop it up sometimes. Like me and Colin. We chop, we chop. Yeah. I was like, I could probably hit him up and it wouldn't, you know what I mean? Like I feel like I recorded it like two days later. You literally did. (laughs) And I hit my friend Tyler up. Anytime he anytime that we play and he's there, he's always in the pit for snake, and I'm always like, Yo, Tyler was good. Oh, That's awesome. I had thanks, Tyler. Michael, yeah. I had something I wanted to ask you that I forgot. Yes. In uh, I think it's you and me. There's is it is that the one with the line? It's kill or be killed. Yes. You hit a little melody where oh, you go kill, kill or be killed. killed. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> it sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. And and it's I, I'm I'm like. You know, I wish there was more of it. No, I feel you. I feel Where you. did that like You're come not from? The first person to like, yeah, like Andy. It was Andy actually specifically was like, oh, like when I would hit little things like that, you'd be like, oh, yeah, shit. like because I think there's one more it. later on in the record. I can't remember which song it is. Yeah, I think you else. do it literally twice on the record. Yeah, and it's out of our hands. It's out of yeah, our hands. yeah. yeah. If you yeah. t- but here's the thing, if you take your time working up to that, yep. Oh yeah, for sure. The people will opposed. be more receptive. I'm not opposed. I just feel like I wasn't really thinking about it until uh like even doing that, like I kind of just did it in the take, uh like those higher ones, or whatever the fuck yeah. Yeah. Called, but yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I wouldn't be like opposed to doing shit like that. Cool. Yeah. You know? Very cool. Yeah. I really truly genuine like it and I feel like the first time I heard it. Like, do on the next one that's a little different maybe if i could like start keep evolving yeah yeah that's keep evolving that's that's the that's the way to do it and then in hardcore it's it's such a difficult genre to evolve in yeah for sure because the, you can just lose them so fast but mm-hmm. if you you know if you do slow and steady kind of wins the race yeah. it's like you've yeah. said you a thousand a taste. times you you evolve don't change evolve yeah. don't change for sure but you're yeah. you don't you know you don't need to do either of those things because you've got a proven yeah <laughs> system here that rocks not through blood is going to be on some album of the year lists i guarantee it for sure um thank you michael for joining us this was awesome this is a this is our longest one in a while yeah it's a long one yeah big daddy yeah (laughs) yeah all right well uh you start a tour very soon we will see you we will see you there i'll i'll be i'll be at a couple of them oh okay now i thought you meant in japan for a second oh that too but then there's a u.s one too yeah i'm not gonna see you in japan though no, yeah. I won't be in Japan. Oh, fuck. That would have been awesome. Not yet. I'll go with you if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you guys you have a great why time. Why you guys go do this there? We, we would love, love to. to. That would be fucking awesome. It, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Japan, if you're listening, fly us on out. Yeah, we'll yeah. be there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Michael. You're the um, man. Uh, not Through Blood out now. Days Media Group Records. Yeah. Lumpy. Have a Lumpy. great day. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.